You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Welcome to the exciting world of the movies. Welcome to December. Welcome back to the movie graveyard. You made it to the 12th level with Jumanji of 2020. <laughs> We're rolling along with great classic flicks here. Everybody, you know me, this is the GOAT. And I'm joined by uh, the, the funniest guy I'm podcasting currently. I'm talking about the one and only Zach from Mac and Zach Save the World. What's going on? That is way too high praise. I feel like uh, you put me on the spot. I got to be funny now. Yeah, if you're not funny enough on this one for everybody, then they need to go check out the Resident Evil uh, live stream or the Halloween live stream. Hell yeah! <laughs> where you guys on the Revival House on YouTube, where you guys, uh, you guys did some memes so dank, I gotta watch that video <laughs> two or three times a week. <laughs> Hell yeah! Fucking uh, that was a dank uh, hangout. We did. Uh, we were just playing uh, Resident Evil Four for uh, Halloween night. Yep. Oh, wait, wait, costumes. the Halloween one. That was uh, freaking Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, Night of the, you guys watch Night of the Living Dead on Halloween night, and you guys were in yeah. costumes. And I won't spoil what the costumes are, but uh, mm-hmm. Mac was in full costume. And uh, mm-hmm. it would complete with semen stains on his clothes and everything. Exactly. He was going deep. So, yeah, so we, we <laughs> to follow that up, we have a childhood classic tonight. <laughs> Rolling right along. Um, I'll just go ahead and get it rolling here. We have this, uh, we're both looking at the new Blu-ray. So like this, when you hit play, like this movie really just wants to start out the bat. So mm-hmm. I have a pause at the two second mark. It Hell just, yes. Yeah, just black screen. It just says a Vestron Pictures presentation. We'll get to more of that in a second here. But I want to say one, two, three, go. When you hear me say the word go, please hit play on your remote or PS3 controller or PS4 controller if you really want to now. Technically, they could have a PS5 controller, huh, Zach? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, all right, everybody grab your remotes. One, two, three, go. Hell oh, yes. Yeah. Nice piano music playing. Mm-hmm. Get you in the sentimental mood. And you know what I really love is those, those like, 80s and early 90s wobbly credits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love those. I always remember this, this uh, title sequence. I don't know why. It's super simple. It's yeah. just like... The big, like it says, little, really big. Yeah. As it's f- f- pulling out and showing credits, and then the in the in a littler font, it says monsters, and it peeks out over the little. It does. Dang well, shit. Like the uh, the the letters that spell out the the cast members' names, it almost looks like that uh, John Carpenter font that everybody rips off. Hell yeah! Like, like the Prince of Darkness font. Howie Mandel. Did you know his name's actually pronounced Howie Mandel? I didn't know that, but that's even funnier. It is. If you thought it was Mandel, you're a victim of the Howie Mandela effect. You are. <laughs> Little monster. He's, exactly. That was almost yeah. like the Terminator credit sequence. It actually is Howie Mandel. I'm, a, I'm lying. Okay. I'm an you asshole. Hit, you hit me full. Mm-hmm. I have a Howie Mandel story, but I'll save it for later. Dog. Yeah. I, I I very briefly witnessed the man in real life. It was, Hell yes! It was a it was a strange uh, occurrence. Was it after he became OCD and was afraid of germs? I was wait it, like it was so way after that that he had no hair left. That's how afraid of germs he was. Exactly. If you don't okay. believe me, that you you can look through the years, and there was a time he got so afraid of germs, he just started because you know a lot of bacteria and shit, you know, sweat when you sleep or, or you know work out or whatever you do, can get in your hair. So he said, "Fuck this, I'm shaving my hair off," and he did, and he's never had hair since. So that's crazy. Yeah, I wonder what it is that freaking got him in that. Like, yeah, yeah we missed uh, on the uh, the over like uh, the voiceover. Fred Savage, he said, "Oh man." My my friend Maurice, I'll never have a friend like him again. He's going full black pill, really young in his life. He is. <laughs> He's taking that black pill. And like when I watched that too, I thought it was weird too that like the movie starts out in black and white, like they're really going for like a nineteen sixties nostalgia feel. <laughs> mm-hmm. Even though this movie's in nineteen eighty seven. Exactly. 
So yeah, well, like, uh, were you, uh, you're, you're a little older than me. So like, were you, uh, kind of out of the age range when this movie came out? You know, I slightly was, and I, and I guess we need to, uh, talk about a Mandela effect. Uh, Zach. Howie Mandela. Howie effect. Mandela effect is, uh, I never like knew cause I, cause I didn't see this movie theatrically. Like I remember renting it on videotape. I never knew that this movie, cause like to me, this was like a pretty big movie. I was probably like, I was probably like 12 or 13 when this came out. So I was slightly above the whatever age, but not really. I thought this was like a big movie that came out and everything. Like there was some like shit going on with the distributors and everything and, and Vestron, you know, we always, we, people always talk about these Vestron video releases. This actually was a legit Vestron movie, if not the last Vestron movie. They kind of went out of business. They kind of mm-hmm. half assed came out from MGM I was reading that it only played in like a hundred and something theaters, so like it made like less than a million dollars. Like that was shocking when I looked that yeah. shit out. That's my favorite Andy Kaufman character right there on TV. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Like uh, the movie, like yeah, back then, like well, it's, it's probably the same now. Like they put out a movie, and like if it doesn't hit with people right away, they you know it's yeah. gone within a couple weeks. So yeah, this is one that found its audience on video later, and uh, on this Blu-ray, it has that uh, you know those old school promotional things they do for the, like the VHS, trying to get yeah. the the video stores to buy up a bunch of copies. Oh, right, real quick, this is Ben Savage. This is his first movie. This is before Boy Meets World, and I love this because this is his first scene, and he has trouble not looking at the camera here whenever it shows his close <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, he does. Which I guess we should talk about too. Um, uh, this is like a weird thing, and, and like because of like the you know the whatever Vestron bankruptcy and shit. Because usually when that happens, movies take a little bit longer to come out. So I could never mm-hmm. like. Did you were you able to figure out like I wanted to know was this movie made before the Wonder Years started production? It was already on. Like they had to uh, work around his schedule. Really? So okay, you know? okay, that's even more fascinating because. In it, Dan- Daniel Stern, who plays his dad, is actually the guy who does all the voiceover. Exactly. Yeah. Six In degrees. Six degrees mm-hmm. of Daniel Stern. And this is before this fucking curly head little fuck meets Topanga. This is pre-Topanga. Oh. Hey, like, he has not met his fucking significant other yet. Be- I won't even go as far to say that because I was such a loser. It was more like I lived in a rural area and I didn't have a car when I was a teenager. Um, I was one of those people who, uh, I won't say I started school early, but I like, you know, like, like my birthday fell right after the school year. So like when I graduated high school, I was like 17, about to turn mm-hmm. 18. So like, I mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't drive for like most, like a lot of people are getting their driver's license in like 10th grade and shit. Like I, yeah. I, I couldn't really drive till like really like junior year and I didn't have a car and stuff. So like. I remember, like, uh, like yeah, probably like I was in ninth, tenth, eleventh grade, like a lot, because we did, also too we didn't have cable TV, um, and we kind of lived in like physically the middle of nowhere. Like unless you had a car, you couldn't go anywhere. Everything was like miles away. So like I would sit at home Friday nights when I was like probably older than I should have been watching like Boy Meets World and um, what was oh, this, yeah. the, the one about the big family step by step and all that shit. So I yeah, like I actually have. Uh, even though you see this little curly-headed bastard right here, I actually had nostalgic memories of this. And obviously, The Wonder Years was a little bit older. Like, I was still pretty young when The Wonder Years was on, in all honesty. Um, see, yeah, The Wonder Years, Boy Meets World, they're both shows I can still go back and watch now and just be really into. Yeah. And what sucks about The Wonder Years, though, is that they they waited, like, decades to put it out on home video. Yeah. So now, like, some of the music is different. Yeah. And that was one of those shows that, like, really went all out and put, like, you know, big kind of, like, you know, decade-defining music in the episodes. Yeah, like, they did that thing where they were always, like, trying to tie the moment in history to a specific song and all that. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not going to lie, dude. When when I put this on a couple weeks ago to watch it for the first time in 20, whatever, no, I keep saying 20 years, like, like I've seen this movie in 2000. No, <laughs> probably mm-hmm. 30 years since I've seen this in all honesty. I probably, because I remember it was like, I it was like one of the videos I rented when we first moved to our, our second house we lived in. I was like 89. So I probably saw this like 89, 90-ish around there. And, um, yeah, like when I put this on, like for a second I had a, a split shock. I'm not going to lie. For a second I thought, the mom was played by Julia from Hellraiser. 
Oh, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. It's, it's not her, but it, it, when you first see her, damn, she looks so much like her. Mm-hmm. I can see it. Yeah. See, I, this is a, a nice little play on that thing as a kid whenever, like, if you had a sibling, it was like, your parents blame you, and it's like, it wasn't me. And it's basically saying, like, oh, it's not you or your sibling. It's the yeah. monsters come up from on your bed and fuck around and make you look like the bad guy. That's a donk. Yeah, because, like, this is, like, the very beginning. Because he was pulling shenanigans late at night. He he was making a, a peanut butter and, and raw onion sandwich. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, that's disgusting. It is <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if he if he would have a good time having lunch with Trickster. <laughs> exactly, fucking a big plate, a fucking uh, what, what was it? Mustard. Yeah, bananas and mustard. I was gonna, I was thinking like dill pickles and mustard. Yeah. I was like, that's even a fucking grosser. I I think you could act, like taste wise, even though it's not like whatever. Like, I think the pickle and mustard would, would like you could swallow. You know, you could stomach it better yeah. than, than banana Actually, and mustard. Actually, a dill pickle with mustard on it probably just tastes like a dill pickle. Well, what I was thinking of is like I get these uh, these hot dogs. They're called Chicago dogs, and like they have like a pickle and mustard on them. So like at least you could kind of be like, oh, it's kind of it tastes a little bit like a hot dog. Yeah, I guess it's just the idea of seeing a plate yeah. of dill pickles with mustard to dip it in is <laughs> like, gross. But like if you it just wouldn't, walk... <laughs> it wouldn't be that bad. <laughs> like if you just walked in and saw Aaron sitting there with a plate of pickles. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably what he was making for dinner the other night when he left the live stream. I don't think he ate salmon. I think he ate uh, pickles and mustard. <laughs> exactly. So Only like... if he was a total alpha. <laughs> exactly. So like when I watched this the other night, like the the ice cream being melted in the cabinet or whatever, like I didn't think too much of it, but yeah, like I kind of caught on here that like, cause cause he gets blamed for leaving his his bike behind the the car or whatever, but like there's actually a string like the bike was tied to the the car. Like I was like, oh that's that's too much. It's not like an accident, you know what I mean? Like it definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yeah. I, like, I, because, you know, like, at this point, we haven't seen no magic or nothing. Like, I didn't really, really think that the monsters had already been to the house yet, but they had. Mm hmm. And yeah, I remember as a kid, it's funny. I watched this. I was so young that I was still young enough to where I was like, holy shit. Like, I, like I was excited because I was like, man, I, I've, uh, you know, reached under my bed. But I've never done it after the nighttime. What if, like, uh-huh. that's real? What if I can hang out with Maurice? Oh. <laughs> and I remember that night I tried it and I was fucking bummed that I didn't get to hang out with Maurice. Maurice is cool. You just found old sweaty socks and shit under the bed. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we're getting ready to meet the bully character. You remember what he's from? Is he the old Doyle Rolls kid from Billy Madison? He could be. He's actually a uh, Buzz from Home Alone. Okay, that's what. It was. That's probably what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. He he could have been one of those kids. It's been a while since I've seen that. It's been a long time since I've seen uh, Home Alone. Is he like the older brother that like? Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of uh, it goes full circle because uh, the producer was talking about a story where uh, when they were casting the movie. Um, at first, like they had a different director, uh, you know, set up. But then, like, whenever they switched to Vestron, that guy wasn't available anymore. But uh, yeah, like whenever they first, they, uh, Ben Savage was like one of the first cast, and like uh, they were, you know, auditioning people to play his brother. And one thing he never likes is whenever like uh, siblings, like two people are supposed to be siblings, but they look nothing alike. Right. So like he he just wasn't liking the kid that they had at the time. And then they ended up switching to his real brother. And then that kid they had at the time was actually Macaulay Culkin. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, now, watch, look at this, though. Fucking Buzz, our boy. He pulls out. He he, he got hit in the head with uh, fucking uh, little brother's... Uh, bag lunch. Uh, yeah, lunch. Because fucking, uh, yeah, fucking our boy, he was like, oh, you put my bike behind Dad's car. He's like, no, I didn't. And he threw his lunch outside. Like, oh, you're going to lie to me. You're going to fucking starve. And then the fucking, our boy Buzz, he comes in, who threw their fucking lunch at me? And he pulls out some bologna doused in mustard. And then the fucking idiot's shocked when he gets, like, when he makes a mess on himself. What a retard. (laughs) He's dumb. And now he wants to fight some more. Amazing. I remember one time I I had a a problem. I was probably, I don't even know, probably third or fourth grade. Some kids were fucking around my lunch and, like, doing dumb shit like sitting on it stealing it and shit so i was like whatever fuckers and like 
I remember, like, this kid grabbed my chocolate milk and, like, sat on it, which, like, I wasn't going to drink fucking out of the milk carton or somebody sat on it. So I remember <laughs> I grabbed them and just choked them. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's what you do. Like, you should... like, legit choke. Like, he was coughing. I held it so long, he was, like, actually coughing later. <laughs> See... What if he was sitting on it to try to come, and when you choked him, it just made the orgasm that much better? <laughs> it could have been. You could have made his day even better. I kind of, I think I did that a couple other times to kids, too. Like, you know, when you're, like, young enough, like, you're not really coordinated to throw punches and all that kind of thing. Like, I would just, mm-hmm. like, grab kids and choke them, you know. Like, I wasn't a bully. Like, it was, like, you know, self-defense or, you know, people being jerks mm-hmm. to me. But, yeah, just choke them, man. Like. Like, they, nobody knew what to do, you know what I mean? Like, they wouldn't even try to, like, pull your hands away or whatever. You just grab them and choke hard. I remember the only real fight I ever got into as a kid. Like, uh, yeah, I tried to stone cold stun a kid because, mm. like, I thought that was real fighting still at the time. Mm-hmm. So then, like, yeah, nothing happened, and then the kid just fucking punched me in the face, and I was like, damn. Yeah. That's, that's harsh. That's not like I thought it would be. Yeah, like, like, I, like, there was a while, like, I was getting in, like, a lot of fights or whatever, like, um, <clears throat> and it was just, like, and then eventually, like, I just stopped, because I was, like, tired of it, because there's, like, this thing when you're, like, school age, and, like, even if you're just defending yourself, like, I pretty much was, like, <clears throat> and thankfully, it was all at an age where we were all too young, like, we didn't know what we were doing, so, like, I would get punched in the face, or I would punch kids in the face, or, or like, the thing that actually hurt the worst, in all honesty, uh, you know, when you're an adult and somebody punches you in the face, like, it could cause serious damage. Like, I knew a guy who got sucker punched and the whole side of his face caved in, broken bones, Damn. everything. And, uh, but when you're a kid, like, you get punched, like, you might get a black eye. I had a couple black eyes as a kid. But really what happens is, like, the worst is, like, if somebody punches you in the stomach as a kid. Because mm-hmm. then you feel like you want to throw up and shit. <laughs> See, that's probably what happened. I tried to stone cold stun the guy. I did the stomach punch at first, and then he's just like, you fucking just punched me in the stomach. I want to throw up now. And he just punched me in the face. Yeah. It's all my fault. Yeah. And it it just got, for me, it just got to the point where, like, like, I just didn't want to fight anymore. So I would just, like, let shit slide. And it's like, the more you let shit slide with assholes, the more they try to bully you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, so, like, yeah, you just got to, yeah, unfortunately, I hate to say it to young kids out there, but you just got to fight. You know, exactly. You just you just don't really want to be fighting once you're like in high school age and people are getting, you know, adult size and stronger and shit. That's when things can go bad and accidents can happen. Exactly. And see, like people are like, oh, uh, what if I don't know how to fight? Well, you don't only want to fight as a kid. Uh, You also want to start drugs really early. Exactly. You find the dealer and like he tries to short like short change to give you less than you wanted to pay for you'll learn how to fight real quick exactly see we're terrible influences we are bad influence i i don't know if you noticed this but like uh i think it was just a thing of trying to be cool at the time but there's like this thing in movies at the time and tv shows about kids having air jordans and stuff like they show uh ben savage's air jordans like so much in this movie it's ridiculous Exactly. Like, literally, he was just carrying them in a basket. And then the other scene, he was climbing up on a wall so you could see he was wearing Air Jordans. And, like, they're always, like, old and scuffed up and shit in movies. But in real life, kids, you, like, because those are, like, the most, pretty much the most expensive sneakers you could get at the time. Like, kids would keep those fuckers clean forever. Mm Mm-hmm. So, uh, at this point, uh, yeah, so his brother's like, oh, yeah, I got a monster under my bed. And he's like, there's no monster under your bed. He, he basically tells him, like, oh, I'll, we can switch rooms. And they're like, yeah, he's doing it to, like, yeah, I'll prove. Like, there's no monster. You don't got to worry. So, yeah, that's where we are in the in the movie. And if you notice, um, Ben Savage right here, or uh, Fred Savage, he's wearing uh, boxers. Yeah. So, he, so keep that in mind for later in the movie. Yeah, it comes into play big time. Yeah, exactly. And then the young, so, yeah. yeah, the younger brother, like he needs his friend to sleep over because he's so scared. <laughs> yeah, they try to. They're they're like some frog brothers yeah. buddies or something. And so, so yeah, they're, he's telling a story. He's like thump 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 thump, and then our boy fucking Fred Savage is gonna fucking get a hockey stick and then uh, thump thump with the hockey stick and scare the shit out of him. That's what you do when you're savage. See, fucking that, that's why they're called savage. They, they, you might as well call Fred uh, Boy Meets World because he been savage. Yeah, he been savage. He's savage 21. Exactly. 
There's a bunch of savages in this film, actually. Yeah. Fucking uh, their little sister is one of the little monsters that we'll see later. Oh, yeah. She has like a uh, teddy bear head. Pretty donk. Yeah, I think I know the one you're talking about. It's funny, too, because like, it, it's like this. Oh, I had, I had that uh, dartboard with a kid. Um, mm-hmm. It's funny, too, because like this movie kind of takes a, like a, a, a little while to get going, considering it's like a fairly short movie. Like, mm-hmm. when I watched this other night, I was just, like, waiting and waiting for the monster to show up. Because, like, w- when you're a kid, like, the preview or when you watch it, like, all you remember is, like, the monsters nonstop. You know what I mean? But you have to actually, like, be patient. Like, you know, like, this ain't no Mac and me shit where you see Mac, like, <laughs> right away. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember as a kid, like, I, uh, it seems like this was a sh- one that was always on TV. Mm. And I always kind of caught it right as the monster was there. So, like, I remember the first time I, like, rented it and watched it all full. I was just like, I'm just, I, I kind of just want to fast forward it to uh, fucking Howie Mandel shows up. Yeah. Yeah, once you're older, it's just like, fucking, look at that. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, somebody to scare him, somebody put his TV in the closet playing, uh, what is it? Shondi, Shondi. <laughs> Hell Yeah. <laughs> Okay, was that Maurice? Probably. Yeah, because he's sucking the remote under the bed now. So Maurice is here already. And you notice too, I don't know if this is the Blu-ray transfer or what, but the Savage Boys for having dark hair, like they got some like really weird like blonde peach fuzz around their sideburns and forehead areas. Like it's weird. Ah, I noticed that on fucking Fred. Yeah. Freddy, yeah. Yeah, like 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 uh, uh, Ben's got it all around his hairline, and Fred's got it like around his uh, what do you call it, sideburns there. Exactly. This is funny. Yeah. So he's eating right here. You know, like, oh hey, we don't only have so much food, so we only can do one take. So he drinks it, and then he forgets to swallow before he says his line. Oh. Amazing. Oh yeah. It's really the milk just shoots out of his mouth. And then you can tell he he starts to kind of laugh. But, and Daniel Stern is just like, what a fucking idiot. But he just goes ahead and says his line anyway, and they just <laughs> used it. They're like, it's a kid's movie. We'll just use it. They're like, when the, when the milk flew out of his mouth, it kind of reminded me of uh, Eddie Furlong and Brain Scan. <laughs> exactly. He's going to fucking uh, look up at the ceiling and just let it fucking run down his chin <laughs> in slow motion. That's funny because that's the first, like... Every time I think of that movie, that's like the first like first memory thing. I have with that movie. Because like I swear, the first time I watched it, I was flipping through the channels and I landed on it as that shot was going on. I'm like, why is the kid from T2 taking a bukkake? And I was like, oh no, that's milk. And then I, I was hooked from there on. Yeah, like like believe it or not, the thing, the first memory I have of brain scan, not first memory, but the the thing I always remember was actually like no kidding, the plate of bananas and mustard. <laughs> Because, you know, like, I knew about the movie. I had, the, like, the Fangoria that covered it and everything. So, like, I knew all about the movie when it came out and loved the movie and stuff. But, you know, in those days, you had to wait, like, ten months for it to come on video or something. So, I mean, it, it wasn't real easy just to keep re-seeing movies over and over then, you know? So, like, mm-hmm. I would just, like, you know, just in general, I would always, like, reread my Fangorias for years. And, like, every time I read the story about uh, Brain Scan and all that, you know... I would uh, see the the picture of the plate of bananas and mustard and shit. So, mm-hmm. now uh, d- did you notice uh, our boy Fred Savage? He's really good at making uh, you know little uh, traps, like mm-hmm. movie traps, around the house, around his room. Uh, you'd think fucking Wes Craven directed this movie for one. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say it's very uh, Nightmare on Elm Street esque, and I'm like, I don't think that was an accident at all. Yeah, Wes Craven like had this weird fixation with this stuff. Like, uh, it happens in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. It happens in fucking uh, Last House on the Left. Like uh, that part where Crew comes out and the fucking uh, the trip wire and like the shit on the floor and it like shocks him. And yeah, like look at that. He's using Doritos. Uh-huh. He's making a fucking trail of Doritos in the bag. And there, That's how Mandel lives the Doritos. In <laughs> Doritos. <laughs> yes. And, and it's not even like spaced out. Like they're touching each other. Like the line of them. <laughs> exactly. Like is he just going to hoover them up into his mouth like a fucking vacuum cleaner? Or what? Yeah. But also, not only is it like, did Wes Craven direct this? But why the fuck is Fred Savage having a hard time doing his science project when he's this good at making these fucking booby traps? Yeah, I, I found it a little hard to believe too that like in one night or whatever, like he instantly like sawed off the legs of his bed 
<laughs> and put like then drilled like uh, joint levers onto them and bicycle chains and all kinds of shit. Yeah, he does this thing with the door so that the knob falls out. So like, yeah, yeah once like he's like he accidentally does it and fucking uh, once the monster comes out, he locks himself in like a fucking idiot. And the, like he pretty much uses all the spare parts from his bicycle to lay this trap. Mm hmm. He's got some, he's got some, uh, you've heard of ingenuity, right? But this is ninjinuity. He's yeah. really good at this shit. Oh, yeah. Like, literally, this is like, like the, and we'll talk about it a little more, but it's funny that this movie tried to rip off Nightmare on Elm Street and then turn lots of other big, way more successful movies ripped this off. Mm hmm. I, I read that the people that wrote the, see, you can see the sideburns there. Yeah, the blonde ones. Fucking hell yeah. Was that was like some weird shit? Like, I remember people, I think women more than anybody, could like uh, bleach their like facial hair so you couldn't see it. Were they, was like the makeup department doing that to these kids? I don't know. Yeah. Because it's pretty weird. Because like, I had like weird hair when I was a kid because uh, when I was like, uh, well, when I was like born, born, I had dark hair. But then when I was like one or two, I, I had completely blonde hair. And then it, and then as I got older, you know, it, it grew back into being brown. But I never mm -hmm. had like, you know, when my hair turned brown, I never still had like blonde sideburns. And shit, you know what I mean? Mm hmm. Fucking weird. This is a cool idea they did. Like, uh, anytime the lights come on, you know, Maurice just turns into a pile of clothes. Like, yeah. uh, the light makes him like, his body like fucking like retreat into the clothes. And then like the longer our boy Fred Savage stays in the, the monster world, he starts turning into like a monster, but that comes up later, baby. Yeah. But yeah, this is where we fucking meet the Howie Mandel character. This is where the movie really starts. Yeah. We're only, let's see, let me check the counter real quick. 24, 23. We're only 24 minutes into a, a an hour, 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah, see, we basically have an hour left of the movie now to tell the entire story. <laughs> yeah, to me that could have been like tightened up a bit. Like I, uh, you know, there's some stuff they could have lost. Uh, I don't really think it drags too much, but like, yeah, yeah. Uh, to me, like the only shortcoming of the movie because I still like this movie. I still think it holds up, and yeah. like, uh, I, like I recognize it's probably like my nostalgia for it because, like, yeah, once you see like a movie and just that perfect time, it kind of it resonates with you and it, it stays with you. But like, yeah, like I think. Uh, it's pretty like solid. Uh, the only downfall of it is kind of like the three act structure yeah. and that like, uh, just because like by the time, like they start having their little like night of debauchery coming up where they're just like going around all these kids houses and fucking with them and shit. Like mm -hmm. he pisses in, uh, the bullies, uh, apple juice and stuff like that. We needed more stuff like that. Like, uh, just kind of fun hijinks. But then by the time, you know, we get past that scene, it's about the time, like, oh, yeah, now he's got a, he's got a, you know, the, the, the weird conflict has to happen where, like, oh, we find out the, the mom and dad are getting a divorce. See, look, oh, that's some cool effects. Like the thing. Uh, yeah, apparently, like, the movie, uh, I guess the writers of the script, I guess they went and watched the movie and they were like, oh, yeah, the lights went off. We watched it and we were like, oh, this is sucking. Oh. Like they weren't proud of the movie. Like I guess uh, they uh, took it to. Uh, they made it. Uh, kind of, uh, apparently, uh, Maurice is kind of more over the top, and apparently that was just because uh, um, Tim Burton's uh, Beetlejuice came out, and they kind of wanted to. Like yeah, let's kind of do that. Cause apparently, like that was one of the re the things. Like when Vestron took over, they were like, yeah, Beetlejuice. We need to get somebody that really understands these optical effects. We want to make like a, a fun little romp like Beetlejuice was, and it kind of became more like that. But yeah, I'll, I'll bring up, uh, a, there was like a, a couple of things in the script that didn't end up getting shot. Or maybe they got shot, but cut out. This is kind of weird. Uh, it it kind of like, maybe it's just because he's like getting to a certain age that he, he grows his horns. Yeah. But like the way it's in the movie, it makes it look like the fact that the light hit him made right. him like mutate. But then it never happens again. But yeah, he gets yeah. his horns right here. Yeah. And like they're all flopping around and shit. And like I thought that was an <laughs> odd choice too, because like yeah, because I remember he had the horns and like 
when I was watching this other night, I'm just like, like this movie really wants to get and like I, it's not really dragging or anything. It's just an odd choice that they wait as long as they do to get into the monster shit. And the reason the reason I say that is that I'm not critiquing, but we'll get to it later. But like pretty much the main villain is like has a cameo in this movie because they ran out of time because <laughs> 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 because they wanted to eat. they wanted to set up all the 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 bin and whatever you know uh fred savage hijinks and i think i think like it's not even like a thing where like oh the movie they made i would cut this out or cut that out i would just kind of like i would kind of just have simplified the script like probably not have given him the little brother in all honesty you know what i mean Mm -hmm. see yeah i remember that like oh he's trying to make him feel bad like oh brian 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 i I feel bad for maurice i would help maurice out yeah, so like when you turn on like uh, you give him a hand right there. Oh yeah. Like uh, when you just turn on like the bedroom lights or whatever, like he can disappear into his clothes, but it's it's when the sunlight hits him, like like he melts into a, a you know puddle or whatever. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Because like so- I mean he's really like all like smoking and dying there. What's funny is as a kid, I always figured like, oh, Howie Mandel, they just made him cut his hair into a mohawk. But like, this is when he had hair. He's wearing a ball cap and then like, yeah, like fake (laughs) top of the head and everything. Yeah. Crazy how life imitates art sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. When you see it now, you know, there's no way that that fuzzy shit is somebody's real hair. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, did you watch any of the special features on the Blu-ray yet? I think I thought I did, but I don't remember any of them. I can't. Re- I, I I know I watched the Howie Mandel interview because I saw him and he had the the vest and all that. Yeah, he pulls out the vest, and uh, he's like, "Yeah, I think there's only one of them," but he's misremembering because, uh, yeah, there must be at least two because Howie Mandel has one, and so does the uh, the Savage Brothers. Oh, okay. So that, that's Donk. That'd be funny if uh, they have like a bootleg one and they think it's the real one. Hell yeah. Also, too, this house that they moved into, we, we should note, I, I meant to say it earlier, because like now it's like getting fixed up a little bit. But when they first moved into it, this place was a shithole. Yeah, it looked very uh, low. Like, Run uh, down. Yeah. So I wonder if, like, uh, uh, yeah, they must have found a real house. And like, yeah, we're going to uh, fix it up, too. So, uh, you know, you get that bonus. You do. Unless it's just all on a sound stage. Yeah, it actually doesn't look like one of those houses, though. I think it's funny, too, because, like, when you watch, like, the making of some movies, they're like, oh, yeah, like, all the interiors, all of it was a sound stage. We couldn't, you know, we just couldn't fit all the equipment and blah, blah, blah. But then, like, this, like, this looks like they're completely in a house because you can always see out the windows and see the neighborhood and all that. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I was just I was just thinking like uh, a wise man once said, you know, he was talking about fucking Ben Savage, and he said, if that curly head little fuck would have just once in Boy Meets World said the line, "I'm gonna banga to panga," that show would still be on the air today. Exactly. And uh, you know, fans of the show they, they might recognize who that wise man was. Yeah, I mean, there's only one guy in the world that would throw out a quote like that. I'd say exactly. Did you have a crush on Topanga growing up? You know, I really didn't, in all honesty, just because I was probably a little bit older than her. Oh yeah, yeah, probably. So, I did. Like, 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 I probably like I was I was probably about three years older than her. I have to look up what her age is. So it was just I was at you know once you get to that point you're not really look, like like you're looking at women that are like adults you know what I mean like on TV and lusting after like you're not really yeah, looking at the was, younger. I just thought as you're saying that was the wise man I was just talking about even older than you. Yeah, he is. Funny how that works. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why he's the wise man. He's been around longer. Exactly. He, he knows more. Yeah. Exactly. He's much wiser than both of us. Yeah, because I re- I remember him. Uh, already being in his 40s when I was uh, in my mid-30s, so. Exactly. No, so, yeah. This is a great effect, even though you can kind of see the wire of the clothes dancing by themselves. Like, like they're, is, they're actually, like, moving in a way where it's, like, real movement. You know, it doesn't look like shit just being jacked up on wires. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, like this is like uh, basically Maurice. He tells him like, yeah, underneath the bed, there's this big world, like the fucking yeah, the monster world where like you go down there. Time is it, it's different. Like you know, like uh, you, not so long down there is like a full night. And all this shit, like, he starts staying up late and hanging out with Maurice. I was just like, damn, I want to do this. It's like, growing up, like, watching it now, it's like, when the fuck does he sleep? How the hell does he go to school? And, like, like it, it implies that he's sleeping at school. We'll get to that. But, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that. Like, uh, maybe just being young. Yeah. Well, oh, uh, you know what I was thinking? Like, the reason I brought up that he was wearing his boxer sh- shorts earlier <laughs> and, yeah. and that Dan- Daniel Stern was in there, later on in the movie, there's a, like when he goes down to the monster world the second time, this girl, pull, or uh, Maurice pulls his shorts down and then his yeah. boxer shorts are showing. And she there's like a weird line where she says, nice ass, which yeah, is I weird. Because <laughs> he's a kid. And like, but I then know. he says like, my mom doesn't even see me in my boxer shorts. And I was like, wasn't he just hanging out in the monster world the whole last night in his boxer shorts? But yeah. I guess those are maybe just really short shorts, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I gotta say, like, like I, I hate those people that bring, like, real-life shit into fantasy movies like this, but I'm not gonna lie, just not only, you know, being an older person watching this movie now, and then also the climate that we live in, this scene, complete, it was in the back, again, we're going back to brain scan here with cool attic bedrooms here, mm-hmm. but uh, he has a uh, poster of License to Drive with the two Corys, yeah, and then like he doesn't just jump down into the monster world underneath the bed. He needs a little bit of convincing. And so Maurice gives him this whole speech, and like I'm not gonna lie, like this whole thing of like trying to convince him to go down and take the plunge and all that, it was it, it felt like weirdly a little more than like molestery to me. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it, it, it's hard not to think that nowadays watching yeah. like movies with kids in it, but especially like. Back in like the eighties and nineties, those type of movies, and uh, from what I hear, like uh, that that poster's on the wall because uh, two of the producers that worked on License to Drive worked on this movie. Oh, but yeah, I it makes you see that. yeah, it makes you think like, fucking yeah, there's kids in this movie. It was made in the eighties. Man, I wonder if there were some things going on behind the scenes. Yeah, with producers and stuff. Yeah. It just, it just it was weird. You never know. And, like, I mean, obviously, like, I would never jump to that conclusion except for the fact that, like, yeah, you hear all this shit now. And granted, 99.9% of it comes out of Corey Feldman. But, <laughs> but you just hear this shit <laughs> that, like, all your favorite <laughs> child actors were fuck boys. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he, he pulls out the flag and he yeah. he he, try, he he appeals to your patriotism to get him to go down there. You think anybody's ever done that to get, like, a chick to sleep with them and stuff? I mean, probably, in all honesty, probably. But this is the American thing to do, though. Yeah. Exactly. And, like, this scene, he really has to sell them for, like, a good five minutes here. Like, Mm -hmm. like if you would have told me when I was that age, like, hey, there's a monster world you can go to and see monsters and doing whatever they want, I'd be like, okay, like, like, how do we get down there? (laughs) You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting idea. Like all the, you know, everybody's, uh, you know, house and bedroom is linked throughout this, oh, yeah. you know, underground, uh, which is uh, people have brought up that the movie Monsters, Inc. Yeah. Like, oh, did that rip this movie off or was it just coincidence? No. And then like, yeah, yeah, we notice like when he comes down the first time, he just falls down. Fucking Maurice is floating down. Yeah. And then like, yeah, later on, he's he's floating down, too. That's when he starts becoming monster. See, if I was Ben Savage or Fred Savage, I would just say fuck it and be a monster. That's cool. Yeah, like, like, yeah, like, I honestly, like, watching this, too, like, just everything about it, the, like, Monsters Inc. completely ripped this off. And the reason I say that, if you ever watch Monsters uh, Inc. 2, which is called Monsters University, that one, like, is a prequel where they're in college, 100% complete ripoff of Revenge of the Nerds. To the point mm. where they even have the collegiate Olympics, like the way the, the Revenge of the Nerds ended. So, like, yeah, there's, like, no doubt in my mind that Monsters, Inc. Because, like, 
those those Pixar whatever you know like people who are on like the A list of of Hollywood I've noticed they have no problem stealing some shit that they think is too obscure that nobody will notice and the reason yeah. I the reason I'm completely convinced it's a rip off is look at Maurice and then look at um, Solly from Monsters Inc like mm-hmm. both big both blue. Oh, and by the way, they both have the same type of horns coming out of their head. Gee, wow. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Like, the fur on the top of his head, yeah, yeah kind of. I can see it, yeah. Very uh, See, I, I, I'm fine when people, like, you know, use other movies as, like, yeah. you know, inspiration. Just just don't hide it. Like, I, yeah. yeah, don't be like, oh, it's just a coincidence. Uh, I just, like, yeah, if I did, I'd just be like, yeah, I did. I loved that movie growing up, and I wanted to kind of imitate it, do something similar. Well, considering Monsters Inc. was probably like, a, like literally like a hundred and twenty million dollar budget film, they could have just bought the rights to this for like a million dollars at the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we saw we've seen some of the monsters there. Some of them had double faces. That one had really long legs and stuff. Oh yeah, here's a weird thing. That's uh, the sister right there with the teddy bear head. Oh yeah, she cut, there she is. But like, yeah, uh, there was a weird thing right here. Where um, there's a line said where uh, he introduces uh, Fred Savage's character and uh, the other character goes, any friend of Maurice is a friend of mine. But uh, when I was growing up, having it on VHS, the line was different. Uh, I, I'm assuming in this movie it's like the, th- the theatrical version, but like in the VHS they changed it to just like, it says like trick or treat or something like that. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen it, but like, yeah, the line was changed. Yeah, I, I was, wonder why. I, I was reading about that when I was like reading how like you know it came out in bankruptcy and all that stuff. And I heard that there's like it's one of those movies where like, and I don't really understand why this ha- happens with movies. Like I understand with R-rated movies, you change stuff to get them to be played on TV, but it also happens with just like PG movies like this. Like sometimes like there's like these different prints where it's like it's like it's supposed to be the final theatrical version. But then there's just, like, scenes where, like, one or two line is different or an alternate take or something. I never understood how that happened, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, sh- I'm sure yeah. it happened back in the day when you're dealing more with physical film and clips are mixed together for different versions or whatever, but... I'm wondering if the VHS just happened to be dropping in October and they just wanted to, like, shoo something in to make it like, oh, it's a Halloween movie or something. I don't know. You know what's funny? It's funny you say that because I was thinking about this because it... Like I said, like, you know, my uh, perception of this was like, this was like a, you know, you know, not like Star Wars or nothing, but that like, this was like a regular movie that came out. Like, I had no idea. It was just like this weird thing that kind of got, you know, half released and just dumped on video. And I was thinking like, if they would have like, if like all this would have took place like on Halloween night or something, this would have been one of those movies that all those people that watch 80 horror movies in October every year. This would have become one of those movies sooner that, like, everybody would have, like, watched every year. You know what I mean? It would have been talked about nonstop. But, like, I really think this Blu-ray coming out is going to be, like, the thing that gets people, like, into this movie again. You know what I mean? Hell yes. And it helps that it's fucking super cheap. It does. It does. It very helped. It helped me buy it. <laughs> I'll say that. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I was, like... It, it like with me, it's like I honestly like I remember renting it and stuff, but I and, and I mean I kind of remember the basic premise and I definitely remember how I and like I remember just seeing like the 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 VHS at the store for years and years, so like mm-hmm. I thought I was familiar with it, but then like when I rewatched it, it was like almost like rewatching it for the first time in all honesty because it's just been so long since I've seen it, so. Mm-hmm. See, this is uh, the stuff that was always the funnest to me as a kid is when they're going around under, you know, going into people's houses and fucking with their shit. Yeah. Like to get them. It's funny, though, because uh, there's like different rules all of a sudden. Like all of a sudden, like these kids are super hard to wake up. I know. <laughs> Even though his little brother woke up pretty easily, it seems like. Yeah. Uh, that's what started all this. But whatever. See, look, that kid had to sit there and pretend to be sleeping. He almost smiled right there if you look closely. Yeah. No, I, I mean, obviously he's a funny character in this movie and stuff. You know, he won't do any harm. But, like, I'm going to go on a limb and say Maurice is actually scarier looking than uh, the newest version of Pennywise was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He is, he is pretty creepy. Yeah. There's a shot coming up where, like, 
he like uh, the part where he's uh, going up to get the uh, the bully kid, mm-hmm. and it's like shot in shadow, and it, lo- it always did look really creepy to me. I guess I'll bring it up when it shows it. See, the, this I never seen anybody do that yeah. until this movie. I was like, what would that do? That's weird. <laughs> well, and then when you think about it, you're like, oh, it's nasty. <laughs> the peanut butter on the phone is donk too. Oh yes. If you notice, there's a there's a shot where um, his clothes change from the clothes he's wearing on this first night to the clothes he wears in the second night. Really? So they must, yeah. So they must have just like shoehorned that into this first night. Yeah. Which makes me think like they did need like another a scene where they were going around doing stuff like this. Yeah. Because it's like, isn't it just after the first night that they do all this? Um, I guess to make it more clear, I think we briefly mentioned it, but. But the way the world works and the way, like... Like, we need to talk about the insidious world of little monsters. Because the thing that Maurice doesn't tell them is that, like, they recruit kids sometimes to come down with them. You know, like, they play tricks on most kids, but every now and then they'll they'll find a kid they like and they recruit them to come down to the monster world. But the longer mm-hmm. you stay down in monster world, like, you actually turn into a monster. So, yeah. like... Like, like, when you watch this, you think it's, like, at first you think it's, like, Monsters, Inc., where it's, like, oh, this is the world of the kids in the world, real world, and then there's a monster world where monsters just happen to exist. It's, like, no, 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 no. It's, like, the monsters used to be real people. Like, not only real people, but real kids. So, it's, like, it's the world that turns them into that. So, like, that's a, you could almost say that's almost, like, an insidious, like, molestery <laughs> parable yeah, right it, there. You know what I mean? <laughs> is Maurice a good guy or a bad guy? Exactly. Because he's kind of, yeah. Now, I have a funny story about this where they get the bully where they uh they uh, they take his tuna fish sandwich and they replace it with cat food. Oh, look, that's that's Donk right there when he uses his mouth as a can opener. Exactly. That, like how like that'd be a, a, a see look, right here. What the fuck is Ben Fred Savage doing here? Yeah. He's he, like did somebody hit him on the head before they called action? He looks strong. Or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like, is he trying to do, like, an Adam Sandler impression or something? I always thought that as a kid. Like, what is he doing right there? Yeah, he's like, goopy. And again, this is, like, borderline whatever, where he <laughs> replaces the apple juice with pee or whatever. Like, that's, like, yeah. borderline fetishistic. But anyway, the story <laughs> I have about this is I remember it, like, clearly. Because at the time, either I hadn't seen the movie or I'd seen the movie in so long, where, like, I instantly knew it was from a movie, but I couldn't remember which one. But anyway, we were at like a, you know, like, a, I don't know what you would call it, extended family gathering. It was like family of family. So it wasn't really like, it wasn't really like our close family, but it was people we knew type thing. And mm. I remember this kid, uh, tr- like literally trying, this like six year old kid trying to convince my mom that he did this for real. He was like, I went to, he's like, there's this kid in my class that I don't like, blah, blah, blah. I went to his house. And I put cat food in his tuna sandwich, and then his his apple juice. I peed in it, and all. That. And I was like sitting there, and like I was like, "This is from a movie, I know." Like I think I've seen this. <laughs> and I remember my mom, like you know, just because it's just a little kid, whatever, playing around, going, "Oh no, you didn't, John. No, you didn't do that. Yes, I did." And it was like so. Even even though I was probably only like ten or eleven years old, I was like, "This is so cringy to hear somebody <laughs> claim that." Really is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do it by like finding out there's a magic portal underneath your bed after the sun goes down too? I've done that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. See, so, look, he gives him sunglasses right here. He's like, yeah. "Oh yeah, this will help you out." Is that like to hide that he's already yeah. turning into a fucking yeah? Yeah, a molester. So yeah, this this I always thought this was funny. Like this scene where like all the parents are pissed off at the kids the next day. Yeah. But this guy, yeah, some of this is kind of dark. Like, that guy sounds like he's going to beat the shit out of his kid. Yeah, they, they, he kind of is. And that kid is, like, <laughs> legally blind, and they still fuck him up. <laughs> he's going to send this kid to the military. So I always laugh at this. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, is that his teacher? <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't, like, he just says that, and then, like, the bell rings, and it's over. Like, we didn't see who said that. <laughs> It's kind of a weird. Uh, yeah, is it just, it's it's is it like just we done? it's like we don't have the budget to show like the establishing shot of the classroom. <laughs> yeah, like was that just done as a way to like oh it's a uh, you know it's supposed to be like kind of a clever uh, you know um, you know transition, but it, no yeah. one really said that to him. Who knows? I have to say too, like watching this again, like the, the whole thing of like Fred Savage, like you know once he comes back to the real world, basically like living that 
Jim Carrey once bitten lifestyle of like being a half vampire and like always falling asleep during the day and shit. Like that was very yeah. weird to see a kid because I mean we see that in movies all the time, especially vampire movies. But it was so weird to see a kid acting that out. Yeah, like the Lost Boys do, or the sunglasses. I always laugh at this. Yeah. Piss. It's so gross. Like, like I would actually argue this is too gross to be in a kid's movie. But yeah, it's funny. It's funny though because he drank piss and then yeah. realized instantly that's piss. Yeah. So does he drink piss regularly to like know that? <laughs> well, of course. And it, Who if does you it? notice, yeah, if you notice, like Fred Savage was just sitting by himself, and that girl comes and, and like sits next to him and hangs out with him. But later on, when he goes to her house to like fuck around with Maurice, he's like, "Oh, she has a picture of me. She likes me. I always thought she hated me. Why? She just yeah. like actively came and sat next to you. She's always talking to you and shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is how it is to be a kid, though. It's just like you don't pick up on those signs." But I thought it was funny, too, like, the bully, like, when he started eating cat food, he's like, oh, this is so gross. I need something to wash this down so I can swallow it. It's like, why wouldn't you spit it out? <laughs> <laughs> Only in movies. Yeah. How does he not break his arms and legs when he, like, flies under the bed and, like, lands on wooden steps and shit? Mm-hmm. Fucking cartoon character logic. Yeah. I'm surprised Howie Mandel's ear... Uh, unless that was like a prosthetic ear. I guess maybe it was a prosthetic ear. It was like, how does the ear not get sore from that giant ass skeleton hanging off it with the knife? Yeah, yeah, there's a special feature which shows him applying the makeup. Yeah, that was like a fake ear. Yeah, so he probably couldn't really hear shit underneath that thing. Yeah. Here it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get ready. <laughs> the sexy. That... Oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he he pants them. <laughs> The little like, girl, nice ass. <laughs> that girl is actually played by um, the daughter of, uh, I forget her name. She was in uh, Serial Mom. Oh, I know what you're talking about because I read that too and I was shocked and I was like, it's like the only movie she ever did, Kathleen Turner. Yeah, yeah Kathleen T daughter. Turner's daughter. This is the only movie she ever did and she like later became like a singer-songwriter or something. Yeah, I read that. Okay, so we've already established this movie ripped off A Nightmare on Elm Street with all the traps. But then oh, yeah. the the way it did it in the kid wacky way with the Doritos and all that kind of bullshit. Then Home Alone ripped the ripped little monsters off, and then also Monsters uh, Inc. or University every all that kind of thing ripped this off. So it's like it's just a never ending cycle of plagiarism in Hollywood, really. Yeah, who's that band on her wall? I can't tell. Yeah, it looks familiar. Maybe like uh, Cinderella or something like that. Maybe yeah. Yeah, now they're at the girlfriend's house, and like, yeah, like the, that scene where Maurice, like his hand turns into a dog and mm -hmm. like chews up her homework, and he has that that weird little uh, <laughs> that was kind of weird too, that little tongue thing. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's she's a little kid, man. I know. But I guess he's supposed to be like eleven. So yeah. Like, well, see, in the, the monster that, world. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is like you don't really like think about it, like because I saw people online talk about the when he pulls his pants out, saying, "Oh, that would never be in a movie now." And like they're right because everything's so PC, it never would be. But like, mm -hmm. I mean, I'll give the filmmakers definitely the benefit of the doubt because you're supposed to be seeing this movie through the eyes of a child because <laughs> because all the uh, the monsters are children too. But they don't really explain that up front, so that's why it all comes yeah. off as creepy, you know. You know what? I, I just noticed for the first time I ever watched this movie that Maurice has a, a rat tail. That you can see when you turn oh, around yeah. there. We were just talking about that the other day. Growing your hair out back to him. Like that shit grow. Oh yeah, he could pull off one of his warts or moles or whatever yeah. the hell that is. Yeah, what, what, I can't remember. Why does he give it to him? I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this would be cool to have a hand that could just turn into a dog. But yeah, I was going to bring up that he has like a, a masturbation like joke here. Yeah, he does. He calls it, like, man's best friend, and then he points out, oh, it's right hand. But the practical effects are amazing in this movie. I mean, I assume it's a, it has to be somewhat of a low-budget movie, but the effect, mm -hmm. besides the makeup effects, like, or, you know, earlier when his eyeballs popped out, and then, like, when his arms grew really long to uh, turn to, uh, pull down Fred Savage's pants... And, the and, fact uh, that he, yeah, the fact that he licks the dog hand yeah, is funny. The dog, the dog hand is good. Like, actually, when he grew the horns, that was good because his head was all pulsating and shit. Like, mm -hmm. they probably had to do completely different makeups, you know, on every day, depending on what tricks he needed to do. 
Mm-hmm. And the, yeah, also too another film that this movie I think definitely influenced was The Mask with Jim Carrey. Oh yeah, with, like with the eyeballs popping out and all that kind of thing. Yeah, and it kind of like the thing too. Yeah. Because yeah. like I know there was the Mask comic book from Dark Horse Comics, but that was a pretty dark comic. I don't think in the comic book uh, the mask was exactly like popping his eyeballs out and making cartoon. Uh, Fucking whistles and shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. See now, like his brother wakes up and sees that he's gone. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, what happened?" Yeah, here's the introduction to what we think is the main bad guy. Fucking, yeah. uh, uh, what well, his name's Snick. And the only reason I remember that is because that's what they called Nickelodeon when it was nighttime. Right, right. Sh- showed the big orange couch. Okay, y- you don't believe me that this is the most influential film of all time. Look at this character right here that he's bullying. What yeah. what movie stole that for its fucking signature scene? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hands on a face of a screaming kid. Tell me, Mac- Macaulay yeah. was probably still on set before they fired him off while watching this happen. That's where he- <laughs> you know. What I, I noticed while watching it this time that I never noticed as a kid is that his like head kind of moves around in that like wig. Yeah, yeah. Was like, it, it was that intentional or like I don't really get it. Yeah, I don't know. But that's the guy. He was also a comedian. Yeah, Rick Dukeman, also in the Burbs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like there was a couple of things he was in. He passed he away played, early, kind of. Yeah, he played like Cindy's dad on like Scary Movie. Mm-hmm. Like there was a couple of things. He was also in this movie earlier too. Oh, he was in uh, um, uh, fucking uh, Encino Man. He played the oh, teacher. Yeah. yeah. He's. Like, oh, Crow Magnum Man. Oh, and she's like, uh, oh, he's odd. I'd date him. Oh, he, lo- he might look uh, pleasing to the eye now. He's standing up right now. I always remember that. Like, uh, he <laughs> says, standing up right now. For some reason, <laughs> was... uh, Crow Magnum Man was a total Chad. Exactly. That jawline. <laughs> Chad jawline. You could fucking get crushed under the weight of that jawline. But, uh, yeah, Rick Dukeman played your favorite uh, uh, Kaufman character earlier on that weird TV show that Ben... Oh, Fred. I always say Ben or Fred Savage. I'm getting them mixed up. One of them was flipping through with a exactly. girl in a bikini. Fred was on The Wonder Years. Ben was on fucking Boy Meets World. Yeah, exactly. Like, I know that oh, in my oh, head, but it's... it's look, closely, it, look closely right here. You'll see Fred, or ben Sa- Fred Savage yeah. swing the bat. And he looks, he's like like a little Maurice looking monster. Yeah. Like he plays a little cameo as a monster if you look closely. It's yeah. It's like a quick cut. I totally noticed that. Oh, you said Fred, but I thought it was Ben. Uh, Is yeah. It Fred I'm, or Ben? Ben. Yeah, Ben. Ben, yeah. I, I'm mixing them up now. Yeah, because I thought that when I watched it and I was like, oh, what the hell? He's a monster now. Right there. Yeah, there he yeah. is right there. And they even put, like, the uh, horns in front of his eyes to kind of, like, hide mm-hmm. it, kind of. Dog. But what I thought was weird was, like, they steal the stuff out of people's houses, right? Then they mm-hmm. take it to the monster world and they break it playing this baseball game. All right, mm-hmm. that's dog. But then they take the broken pieces back to the house. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That, that's a cool monster, the pumpkin head one. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is that what it's supposed to be, a pumpkin head? Maybe, yeah. I think they called it that in the special features. Oh, I think you're right. It looks like a pumpkin headed guy that you would see on um, uh, uh, Goosebumps. Mm hmm. And I think uh, the. Uh, I could be wrong. I might have been mixing up names, but I think the, the, the director actually, like, hand drew his, like, basically the concept art for all the monsters. Wow. Like, he came with those ideas. Like, even, like, the boy character, which is kind of alluded to here, but you probably won't even notice. So, like, they kind of set up, oh, yeah, don't go on boys fucking, you know, stoop or whatever it is. Yeah. And it's like, uh, yeah, but then, like, you kind of forget and you think, oh, it was just that Snick character. But the boy guy, the boy character and the Snick character kind of hang out. They might be lovers or something. Maybe they're fucking <laughs> each other. Oh, I think they Maybe are, they the way they set it up. I was going to say we're at the 56-minute mark. And we're introduced as like not like not the screen introduce of you know, the the main villain, but just the idea that there's a main villain. Mm-hmm. So you, oh, we saw a silhouette right there. Yeah. 
But the, I noticed when I was watching this Blu-ray, there's like a glitch here. Did you notice that? Yeah, because people were t- people were debating what that was. People were saying, "Oh, I think it's the layer change." Like, I don't think it's the layer change because layer changes are usually handled differently by different players. And like this happened, I think it was just like uh, when they made the digital version, there was like a film splice or something that went wrong. Yeah, it's whenever like he gets ready to throw Maurice over, and then it like I paused it on it. It's like a, a like a uh, a still image of the same shot, kind of, but it's like yeah. the color timing is way different. Yeah, yeah. It, it might, maybe it's like a slightly different shot, like before he picked him up and it was just looking over the edge. Yeah, it's hard telling how that happened. Yeah, it just you know editing error or when they did this version error. But, uh, yeah, like, well, I'll, I'll wait till he shows up. But I was, uh, you know, from the, the main credits gave it away that he was in this movie. But the guy that plays the main villain, I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. He's in this movie. Oh, I love I love this guy. One of his early roles. He's barely in it. A really quick scene. And uh, there's a, 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 a story behind, like, uh, he literally shot this uh, scene. Mm-hmm. And then, like, he was supposed to go and shoot his uh, parts for a... Uh, Born on the 4th of July. Really? But, like, they shot this movie in, like, South Carolina, or one of the Carolinas, because that's where the uh, the, the warehouse was, where they did the whole underground monster lair. And it's actually the same warehouse where they did uh, the uh, the Foot Clan scenes from TMNT, the original. That's and, like, funny, because it has kind of that feel to it. Yeah, and, like, uh, scenes from Super Mario Brothers, the movie, which is kind of infamous. But, like, yeah, uh... Basically, like he got held up, he had to stay in North or South Carolina an extra day or something. So he ended up almost missing his uh, date to show up and do his scenes for uh, uh, Born on the Fourth of July. And there was like a famous story where uh, he kind of messed up a line or, uh, like a couple of times, and like the director yelled at him. He's like, "Why the fuck don't you know these lines? Oh, I know why you don't know these lines because you were shooting some fucking shitty movie in South Carolina last night instead of with us." fucking going over your lines <laughs> and then he had to take like five minutes to look at the script and then like luckily he uh he can uh, memorize his lines quick enough so uh he was able to swing it still yeah well t- i'll talk about him when he pops up but he's one of my favorite actors he's got some mm-hmm. donk ass uh, independent movies out mm-hmm. um, but yeah so th- so like at this point in the story we're pretty much now we know there's a dark side to monster world and all that kind of shit yeah, he showed up to school and realized that his uh, girlfriend uh, pulled out her homework and uh, it was all destroyed. Yeah. So now he's kind of angry at Maurice, like, you fucked up her homework and she got in trouble. Yeah, somehow uh, Savage didn't see uh, his hand turn into a dog <laughs> with the homework because he was, he was playing with Maurice's zit or whatever it was. <laughs> exactly. So if he didn't see Maurice do it, how does he know it wasn't just a dog? Yeah. Like, yeah, like you always hear that, like, "Oh, my dog yeah. ate my homework." Has that ever happened to you? Like, you know, like, I was gonna say, I think it kind of did one time when I was like, happened, really young. Yeah, yeah, it, ha- it happened to me one time, but like the dog didn't eat it. it like the dog just kind of like, yeah, maybe spilt something and made a mess on it to where it was like unreadable. Like, like it, it wasn't like that much like work to redo, but I think I had to like recopy on it a different piece of paper because like the bottom got chewed up, but it wasn't like the whole thing got destroyed or anything. Mm-hmm. And then the freaking uh, Buzz from Lone, he's like, you don't have a dog when she said that the dog got it. He don't know that. That was always yeah. what the kid said whenever, like even if, uh, like you don't know if it's an excuse or not. It could have really happened. But there was always a kid, like whenever that kid said, oh, my dog got a hold of it. There was always a kid that's like, you don't have a dog. It's like, shut up. You don't know that. It's just like a meme. Like you had to point out that they're lying. It's so funny because, like, I remember busting my ass, like, probably all the way through fourth grade and always getting straight A's and, you know, whatever. And then, like, school, like, actually started getting more serious. And I, or maybe it was just I didn't want to pay attention anymore. And then, like, I came home with, like, a report card that had, like, two C's on it. It was, like, the end of the world and it was so shitty and stuff. And then, and, like, after that, I just never cared. And I, like, pretty much got, like, I was pretty much, like, a legit C student. And I remember, like, all the way through high school, like, never doing any work. Like, the only time I actually did something was when you had to do, like, a physical project. And I would just, like, yeah. slap some shit together, like, the night before and get, like, a C-minus. 
And it's like, like, I really don't think, like, you know, especially my last two years of high school, like, I don't think I did any homework at home, like, at all. Like, like I had study hall, and it's like, it's like, if I couldn't get it done in study hall, like, I always had study hall, like, last period, I would set it up that way, or maybe it just would be set up that way for me. And if I couldn't get it yeah. done, I just left the books at school, and I didn't do it. Yeah, it, uh, it's kind of weird, too, because apparently they know for a fact that, like, homework doesn't actually improve test scores. Yeah. But, like, it's just one of those things that it's, like, tradition and we have to yeah. do it. But, like, you know, yeah, it's weird. But, like, yeah, I remember when I was a kid, like, the, the worst I ever got was in, like, fifth grade. Like, I, I was literally, like, falling asleep in class and shit. Like, I didn't care at all. And I remember yeah. I, I brought home a, a report card one time, and it was, like, Fs and everything. Yeah. And I, I remember I, I had the nerve to be surprised. It's like, how the fuck is that? And I was all pissed off, even though, like, I never did my homework. Well, <laughs> but, like, yeah, yeah that, that, like, really, that, like, did something, like, that made something click in my brain where it was like, yeah, uh, I think, like, it was reversed for me. Like I got held back in fifth oh. grade. And then like all of a sudden, like all of a sudden, like work was like way easier until like high school. Whenever I, I started like slipping back into like C's and stuff. Yeah. It helps when you get older. Cause like, I remember like when I was in eighth grade, me and my friend, like we just hated school. So like we weren't like bad, bad kids, but we were just like, you know, smart off and really more making corny jokes than we were being mean or bad. And, like, we would mm -hmm. get kicked out of the math class and stuff and never do the homework, never do the test. It's like, just, just as, a, like, a shitty half ass way of rebelling. But it wasn't even rebelling. It was just we were having fun. And, like, mm -hmm. I actually did shitty enough that year that I had to go to freaking summer school. Which, yeah. and everybody's like, oh, it's the worst because then your vacation's gone and, oh, you're in summer school and you're blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and it wasn't like, that bad. Well, not only that, but summer school was, like, I think, like, six weeks long. So I yeah, still had, yeah. like, half of a summer left. And, mm -hmm. and, like, I remember I actually did do the summer school work. I was like, you know, I don't want to fail or whatever. Yeah, it was only, like, a couple weeks long, and it was yeah. only, like, three hours a day or something. Yeah, it like was that. short. It was, like, maybe four or five hours. I remember mine was. And I was like, you know what? Like, in a weird way, like, you know, I don't want to keep doing this or whatever. But in a weird way, like, you know, just not doing anything for eight months and then doing like a month and a half of work was actually easier than doing the school yeah. school work all year long. It's funny because you figure that out like, oh, the only reason I came to summer school is because I would have got held back if I didn't. Yeah. So like it's kind of like you beat the system and you realize like, oh, I don't have to fucking do anything all year long and I could just do summer school and be OK. Exactly. And what was weird, too, was like because there's also two like smart kids would go to summer school to get extra credits or whatever. So, like, it wasn't, like, the complete, like, dummy, like, whatever experience you think it was. Like, it was just, like, normal school, but, like, there was obviously less kids there. There was obviously, there was, like, maybe a fourth of, like, what would normally be at the school. So, it was actually kind of more fun because the hallways were empty and the classrooms mm -hmm. were smaller. So, you had more time to talk to people and get to know people. It seemed like there was more girls there and everything. So, yeah, yeah it, it, at least that one experience. I'm sure there's probably some summer school stories people have that are awful, but mine will actually wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. We just got past the scene where uh, Fred Savage finds out, and they've been alluding to it slightly throughout the movie, that uh, Daniel Stern and uh, the the mom character are, like, having a rocky relationship because at the beginning it's like uh, they're fighting, and then, like, the brother wakes up, and he, like, they don't even leave the room. They're still in the hallway, and they're like, you think he hurt us? It's like, well, yeah. he definitely heard you now. But, like, yeah, it's like now he found out they're getting a divorce and, like, you know, Maurice, he's like, yeah, I heard that sucks. And that's funny because even in the monster world, getting a divorce is, like, still bad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like I forgot to say it earlier, but, like, when they're by the steps by, like, where Boy lives or whatever, and then right there that shot, too, before they came up here, like, there's some parts of the monster world, did you know this is, Zach, where, like, there's kind of like a reddish light on the floor and then like the floor is all shiny. Like it looks like they threw a bunch of pennies down on the floor. Did you see that? I didn't. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of that movie, the crow uh, part two city of angels, how like that one, they just literally sprinkled uh like broken glass everywhere to make the ground shiny everywhere. Mm. Yeah. Like I would say this is probably actually where you get to see the monsters, the best like close up of their faces and like, yeah, like yeah. the makeups are pretty donk. Like, you know, when you're down in the monster world, there's like a, a few slightly kind of generic ones in the background, but all the monsters in the scene are awesome. Mm -hmm. Like the ones that are puppets and shit. 
Yeah. Like this is yeah, like uh, basically Maurice had to like talk him into going down this night because he was bummed out after finding out his mom and the dad are getting divorced. Yeah. And so he got him to, and then like they they go, oh, we're gonna we got a new you know person we're gonna scare, and it's like a fucking infant. Yeah. So now he's like, oh, this is this isn't cool, man. So he like leaves, and that's kind of funny, like because he opens the door and then like the light comes in and we see like, oh shit, he's reacting like the monsters do, but then like he just runs out. Yeah, and then here in a second, like he's he's gonna react again. So like it, it comes and goes at first, but like it's funny because like he just ran out. Like it's a good thing the yeah. parents didn't find him or like running out of a, an infant's room. Like yeah. what the fuck were you doing in there? Well, like also too, like yeah, like the little beam of light coming from the door being cracked made his arm like go all wobbly and disappear. But then he just mm-hmm. jumped out into the full light. So yeah, yeah shouldn't, yeah. He, shouldn't he have shrunk up? guess it comes and goes at first it just but yeah like right here he finds out like oh i'm shrinking and it's like why is that there like uh, uh, like that they didn't need it maybe like they just wanted a reason for it to be called little monsters (laughs) but i can't imagine that's the reason it's there but like yeah like maurice is taller than him and like like do they like obviously there's a bigger uh guy than maurice that fucking that snick guy is the bully (laughs) down there maurice was a in, in a college sophomore when he got sucked into the monster world. <laughs> yeah, but he must have like shrank a little bit at least. Yeah. Well, I just I did like that touch though of him realizing he was shrinking to be like a way to figure out he was turning into the monster and everything. But that's probably the only reason it's there. Yeah. Yeah, like like I just took it to be like maybe he would because you know how like some of the monsters were just like little skinny puppets and shit. Like, mm-hmm. I thought maybe he was just, that just meant he was going to turn into one of those. Weirdos. Yeah, maybe that just has something to do. Maybe everybody reacts differently, like, yeah. th- depending on the monster they become. So, like, when I was a kid watching this, I always thought maybe Maurice didn't realize that he was doing, like, him going down there was, like, a bad thing and yeah. spending time. So, like, yeah, I always thought, like, maybe, uh, like, Maurice is just, like, uh, you know, ignorant to that fact or something. But, like, I guess if they're all, like, used to be kids, he had to have known, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, he, he definitely knew, and, like, and he also knew, like, he was changing more and more as time went on, like, like, he's probably, like, only been there, like, a couple years or something, whereas, like, those other ones that are, like, bug-looking people and shit, they're probably, but I, I, like, I thought it was so weird that, like, all the monsters look different, and then Maurice looks like this bully one, like, they both have the blue skin and the moles growing everywhere, I was mm-hmm. like, are they supposed to be like brothers or something? Like, I thought that was going to be revealed later, but it never really was. Maybe there's like races or something to the monsters or something. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, because there's like, yeah, there's that little one that Ben Savage plays, or yeah, Ben Savage. And then if you look in the background during another scene where a different person's used at the bat, it looks like there's another kid that's similar. Like, see all the pennies on the ground, Zach. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I mean, that's it. probably not what they are, but that's what it looks like to me. Mm-hmm. Dog. You notice it's something new every day. I know. Watching movies. And yeah, like, that's kind of funny, like, where he's like, oh, uh, don't make me upset. You won't like me when I'm upset. And then that fucking weird puppet comes out of his head. Yeah. He's like, what the fuck was that? And he's like, that's what happens when I get upset. I don't know. Weird monster shit. And then, like, yeah, like, he's uh, he uh, said, uh, uh, he, he asked him a question. He's like, oh, no, I got a hunch. And he's like, what, like my hunch? Like he's self-conscious about it. He's like, no, yeah. no. I meant like, uh, like uh, you know, I take it back. He's like, back? And then he starts fucking choking him or whatever he does. Yeah, a lot of oh. puns about his hunch. <laughs> Dog. I know he breaks his horn is what he does. Yeah, yeah he breaks his horn. Does that like, actually look painful? Hell yeah. But, um. But oh. This leads to the conflict. Like, uh, yeah. basically the, the little brother's gone. So he finds out, like, yeah, fucking Snick got up there and took him to basically get this kid to go back down because they want him to be a monster for life. Why yeah. Why him specifically, though? For L wife. Yeah, because, like, I don't, I don't really get either. See, I think they want him, they want to basically use him as a slave and make him reenact episodes of the Wonder Years for them that could in be. perpetuity. Yeah, they use the brother as bait to get him to go back down to Monster World, basically. Mm hmm. But it's kind of weird because, like, he, whoever the monster was that came out and kidnapped him, he came out of the fold-out bed, whatever. Like, why did why did he go get the little brother? Why didn't he just directly get 
Fred Savage. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard telling. But one thing I wanted to say was, because, uh, you know, at first, when like way back when Maurice first took him, he's like, oh, you can eat all the pizza you want. And, like They just had that giant buffet table with donuts and pizza and shit. I was like, oh, this is like Monster World. Like They make this food. They magically make it. But then, like, before, when that other guy, like, broke off Maurice's horn, like, he, they were at the, the catering table of all the monster food. Like, you saw, like, giant bottles of, like, Mountain Dew and shit. I'm like, this is, like, real food that they got to go steal. Like, I want to see the deleted scene when the little monsters have to, like, run into the closed-down 7-Eleven and steal all exactly. the soft drinks and shit. <laughs> Yeah, there were, like, I, I read about some deleted scenes. There was one, as soon as, like, the first time they go down, there was, like, a, a creature effect where it was, like, a big... Uh, like a uh, praying mantis or something type of monster. Oh. And like, uh, like, uh, Maurice like made his legs grow so that he's like as tall as the monster to say something to him. And I guess that got cut out. There's a scene where like, uh, here in a minute, they're going to get the bully in on their group to help them out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, in the script, they set that up to where, um, there was a scene where when they go to his house, he like found a, a dirty magazine, or no, uh, it was Fred Savage. His character steals one of uh, Maurice's. He finds his stash of dirty magazines. And then whenever they go to the boy's house, he puts it in his top drawer so that he'll get in trouble. And like uh, later on in the movie, that's how he convinces him that like, obviously I'm not lying, you know, because I know he brings up like, oh, I was the one that put that dirty magazine in your top drawer and, uh, you know, the cat food and shit. So that's what convinced uh, the bully to like, oh, he's not lying and shit. Yeah. Whereas here, it just like he really just instantly joins them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I wonder if that was a deleted scene. Maybe it was Maurice himself that like said it to him. Who knows? It could have been. Oh, I, yeah. I thought it was funny how they like they know how to hook all this shit up. I mean, not that it's hard, but. Yeah, he he would have no problem, you know, doing the science projects. Yeah, I know. And the good thing that somebody had a magically had a shed full of billions of light bulbs and giant lights and shit. Yeah, very Evil Dead, like the uh, suiting up, you know, scene from Evil Dead where he's like getting the fucking, uh, you know, sawing the shotgun yeah. uh, up and stuff. That scene's awesome when he. In the woodshed where he has to chop his girlfriend out and she's spitting that black blood everywhere. Hell, you know what I, I thought recently? Uh, you know how people do the fan edits and they mm. made like the, the fan edit of one and two of Halloween. So yeah. it's like one movie. I, I, like I was thinking like, I wonder if you could like make the fan edit of uh, Evil Dead 1, 2 in Army Darkness to where it's like one movie. Like yeah. it, it would be. Yeah, it'd be hard, and, like, there would be an obvious, like, casting change for the girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, I wonder if you could do that. Uh-huh. Like, put scenes from the second one with the girlfriend in the first movie and, like, do all that shit. That's actually interesting if you could, like, do it as flashbacks or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wonder how you could do that or if you could cut, like, the scenes together, like, from both mm-hmm. movies. Oh, look at that. That person just disappeared out of their pants. Mm-hmm. No, like, I never said that. Does that, like, kill them, you think? I think it just stuns them, yeah. yeah. It never killed, uh, fucking Maurice. Maurice. Yeah. But they're all, like, running in terror and shit. Like, this whole underground, uh, pedophilia ring that they <laughs> <laughs> drafted oh. into. They don't want no part of it. Now people show up with flashlights. This is the pedophile ring that was run out of the basement of that pizza parlor. Yeah. I meant to make that joke. That's why they had so much pizza down there. Exactly. It's they just put up a cot and then like the uh, the underground like fucking portal to the underground uh, unlocks. Because as we'll see later in the movie, like basically you set up a bed and it doesn't matter what kind of bed it is, it it works. Because like at the end they get out through like a a homeless guy who's just got like a a little uh, cot or like a pillow set up as his bed or something. Yeah. Yeah, like a la- uh, what do you call it? a lawn chair, lounge chair? Yeah, yeah. And like, there's like no room to even crawl out from underneath them because, like, in real life, there'd be like maybe six inches between his, you know, chair and the sand. Mm-hmm. Like, See, there's some of these monsters have horns. Yeah. Like uh, that scene uh, with the baby, there was like a fucking like Elvira looking chick with horns. Yeah, I was gonna point out. 
but I didn't point out like, oh, she uh, she like Elvira though. Why don't they all like make the sex with her? And then I realized she could be uh, a kid, so I shouldn't make that joke. No, but they're all kids too, so it'd be okay. Exactly. That's how you get around it. Yeah. See, we're getting ready to meet the uh, the main baddie, yeah. who we we've heard alluded to one time. One time. A whole one time. But now we're you... finally going to see him at the one hour, 17 minute mark. There's like roughly, if you're not counting credits, there's roughly 20 minutes of movie left. We're mm-hmm. going to see our guy. And if you weren't paying close attention, you probably didn't even hear him get alluded to. No, yeah. Because like, I barely, it, it's not like they like sat around and talked about him for five minutes. They're just like, oh boy, what a... Like, like I only yeah. caught it because I was like looking for the character in his name. Yeah, so his name is Boy, mm-hmm. basically because at first he looks like, oh, he's yeah. just a he's a normal person, but then as the camera reveals, it pulls back. You see like little hints, like oh, he's got weird scales or something on his hands, and like around his hair, it looks like he's got scales. But then like the camera will reveal in a second when it pulls around that he's a monster that like must have skinned somebody and is just like strapped the skin onto himself, which is fucking creepy for a kid's movie. I remember as a kid, that shot where it pulls around and shows the back of him. Mm -hmm. I thought that was fucking scary as fuck. Yeah. Like I, that's why I wanted more of them. Cause like, it's so creepy. Cause it's like, we should say it's our boy, Frank Whaley uh, Mm -hmm. before he was the Chad in, uh, career opportunities he did this movie in born Fourth july now this scene got me too when like the whatever thing starts drilling in the fred savage's foot like i was like oh like that that was like one of those painful little things yeah so is he the main character in career opportunities yeah jim jim dodge when, yeah. when, when he does a lot of his cameos people make him pretend like he's jim dodge. here's the shot right here mm-hmm goes by Frank Whaley had a weird weird career too because he kind of had big roles for a while then he just went back to doing small supporting roles Mm -hmm. yeah so what would you say is going on with the back of his head it's like is that like his real monster head and he's just yeah the little straps are holding the human face onto his thing yeah I remember as like as a kid growing up watching it that shot was always dark enough to where you couldn't tell exactly what's going on but like your mind kind of fills it in yeah even the blu-ray like this this scene with him is still kind of dark really Mm-hmm. maybe that was part of like getting away with getting like doing it in a kid's yeah. movie or something well even to how the other monster bully was always smoking i thought it was kind of inappropriate for a kid's movie yeah like they don't do that movie like even like if it's not a kid's movie it seems like they don't have characters smoking now i know which is weird like, if they do, they have to have another character point out that it'll kill them. I know. that. I think somebody said, like, that's a rule if, like, if you want to... Mm-hmm. Like, you can still technically smoke in a PG-13 movie, but you have to, like, instantly decry the fact that somebody's smoking, which, like... If, you, if, you, if, if you're used to watching older movies from the 80s and even, I'd say, up through the mid-90s, like, you, like I mean, like, I don't really, like, hang out with a bunch of smokers in real life, but, like, mm-hmm. it's just part of film, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and like uh, as if we wouldn't know that it's going to yeah, kill you. Exactly. They have that big warning on the box. And like everybody, like my grandpa, I mean, he was like a World War II and shit. Like he was from the old days when they actually didn't know cigarettes would fucking fuck you up. Like he had, all, had like emphysema and shit. And like when he got older and had to like be on oxygen, you know, parts of, you know, a little bit here and there throughout the day. Like, like I was really going to watch that and be like, oh, I need to start smoking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, th- did you notice that fucking uh, Ben Savage is just like very comatose, Brian? Like, are they yeah. they got him on like fucking roofies or something? Yeah, I was gonna say he's so, he's so drugged up. So exactly. they they use their weapons of the uh, the flashlights on Boy, and then he instantly like pulls his own face off to reveal like a bug face. Was that the thing where you're saying where he was going back between things? He couldn't film all his scenes. You think? Uh, it could be, yeah. Yeah, it might have been like that was just how it's scripted, and like I think it, uh, somehow he got stuck where uh, they were shooting this movie and couldn't yeah. get back like as soon as he wanted to to like do script readings. So he almost like was late to the shooting of it. 
But like, yeah, he ended up making. So it might have just been written as a really small part, and like, yeah, he just got kind of stuck in South Carolina or wherever it was. Yeah, because this movie's pretty early in screen. Because from this point on, like Frank Whaley's never in the movie again. It's this somebody wearing a like mask, which I doubt Frank Whaley would do this. Like most shots, it looks like a puppet. In all honesty, yeah, it's a puppet for most of it. Yeah, but like this part, there's somebody there. But then yeah, that part, it's like the close up is a puppet. You know what I was thinking would have been a donk ass double feature like back in the day at like a drive in. I mean, even now, I guess they're they're booking old movies and shit. But could you imagine watching this movie and watching Garbage Pail Kids movie back to back? Hell yes. Yeah. You know what I th- I, I thought too while I was watching this, getting ready for the show. Well, whenever he sleeps in his little brother's room to convince him, like, oh, there's no monsters. And then, like, there's that scene where Daniel Stern comes in, and he's just like, oh, that's nice of you to switch rooms with your brother. See, I was thinking, like, what if Brent and Daniel Stern was just, like, thinking, like, it does but does my son have this weird kink where he jacks off, like, on his brother's <laughs> bed and just, like, gets off to the <laughs> thought of him sleeping on it? Like, uh, are you going to be covering this bed in commies tonight? <laughs> That's why you gotta get the uh, Friday Thirteenth uh, shower curtain to make sure that don't happen. Hell yeah, I might buy that. If yeah, it, if... it's pretty good. Friday Thirteenth three shower curtain. That's fucking genius. Yeah, everything. You ever, you ever notice that everything like that's cool enough for you to actually want to spend enough money on now is like always limited edition. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But stupid shit that nobody wants, it, like is available forever. Mm-hmm. And like Maurice's uh, horn, like being broken but dangling, that was painful looking too. Mm-hmm. Now this yeah, is some what... real MacGyver shit, don't you think? Right here. Yeah, see, that's how good they are. Like they they could have aced that science test with nothing. They found an old phone, and then they're going to like run current through it, like jacking it up. <laughs> With the, yeah, with like the lead from two pencils. From two pencils, which which I'll, I'll be honest, I don't even know science wise. I'm I'm not that smart to know, but I was like, I I wasn't buying that pencil lead would conduct that electricity like that. Yeah, I don't know, like graphite. I think yeah. is what it's what the lead's made out of. Yeah. But like, they just need enough light to make fucking Maurice turn to clothes, and then they can push him underneath the door and then he can reform on the other side and open it and let them out yeah genius these kids are fucking genius they are like it would be later used for a different movie but it's of little monsters that should have called this movie baby geniuses exactly and, and fucking maurice he's such a fucking prankster he, he gets on the other side he's like you, you guys know how to pick a combination lock yeah fucking a trickster See, we needed a Maurice and Trickster team up. I'm sure Howie Mandel would do it. I guess this. I guess this is the point because the movie's almost over. I should tell my Howie Mandel story. Hell yes! So I was at Disneyland. Oh man, probably. I think the the when I li- when I lived in LA, the two times I went to Disneyland were '08 and '09. Like one year I went for Halloween, and the following year I went for my birthday. Because for a little while, if you lived in California, you actually get them free on your birthday. So anyway, I was like, I think it was in Tomorrowland. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was like walking out of like the store. I think it's now it's like the big Star Wars store. By the time it was just like a whatever store. And like, yeah, like I walked out and like I seen a crowd of people. Right. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, why is there a crowd of people? But then I see like Buzz Lightyear, like, you know, the character that walks around the park. I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, like these people must be like whatever with Buzz Lightyear. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then, like, Buzz Lightyear started, like, walking away, kind of, and, like, everybody was still, like, in this semi-circle, so I'm like, what's going on? So I, I walked by, and I looked, and it's Howie Mandel. Hell yes. <laughs> and he's there, and he, he was dressed in a, you know, he had, like, a you know, button-up shirt with, like, a wacky print on it, like you think Howie Mandel would do, and, you know, he had a shaved head already by that time. And it's like this crowd of people, I'd say like literally probably about 17, 18 people. And like, like as more people are coming out of the shop there, cause it was like the one for star tours. Like you get off this ride and they feed you into a giant gift shop to try to get you to buy shit, you know? And then mm-hmm. you come out of the gift shop. So it's like, so more people like over time are coming out of this gift shop and stumbling on Howie Mandel. 
and I'm assuming he was probably waiting for somebody that was in the store or something nearby or whatever. He's like up against the wall, like by himself. And I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. Howie Mandel's at Disneyland and people are bothering him for an autograph or picture or something. But nobody was. They were just standing around looking at him. And he was just standing against the wall, like, and he wasn't being a dick. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't doing anything. He was just literally standing against this wall, like, kind of like, you know, like he was waiting for somebody or something. And all these people were just standing and looking at him. Nobody was talking to him. Like, you know, yeah. like I, I walked by, you know, I was I was within earshot of this the whole thing for probably 20, 30 seconds. Nobody was talking to him. He wasn't taking pictures. Anymore. It just was kind of like, you know, I'm here and all these people are standing and looking at him. It was weird. It was, it was wonder, like Howie Mandel was in a zoo. Yeah, I wonder if they tried to ask him for stuff and he's like, yeah. hey, guys, I'm a germaphobe. Can you, like, stand back? You're, well, you're well, giving me a panic attack. Yeah. That's kind of what it, you know, now that I think about it, that's kind of what it looked like in all honesty. Like, it, yeah. like you could tell he was, like, not wanting to get up with people. So, I mean, maybe he did tell people, you know, I'm with my family. I'm not doing pictures or autographs right now or something. But, but I mean, just I was just watching people stumble on it and, like, they were just looking. I'm like, ooh. And it wasn't like everybody was like, oh, it's Howard Mandel. It was just, it was oddly weird and quiet. You know what I mean? It was just people gathering around him for no reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked over it, but that scene where they they show up, they walk back, and they have all those lights on them, and then the the boy character and the V or the Snick, I keep wanting to call him V for some reason, but yeah, the boy character and V or fucking Snick, they're standing Snick. there, and they fucking see them walk up with all these lights on them. They know that the lights hurt. They just had them fucking flash lights at them earlier, and they just stand there like yeah. waiting. <laughs> To get like, blasted they, with light. Did they just, they just, did they not know? Like, oh shit, they've got like way more power now. They can yeah. reach us from way over there. Yeah, and like Snick is back. Like, like well, that's what's funny too is like Boyle. I think actually died there, but Snick is like his body parts are reforming, but like his one leg is gone, so he's kind of like hopping around on one, like one leg. Mm-hmm. I thought this was a weird touch. Like this movie is kind of like a little too dark for kids. You know what I mean? It is a little bit. Yeah, I love this line though. How about a light bud? Yeah, and I, I always thought it was inappropriate that Snick was always smoking in a kids' movie, but I think this is why I should do this. So, <laughs> one last movie that this film strongly influenced here was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, oh, amazing. Yeah. yeah, Howie Mandel comes here with the flamethrower to, to just burn uh, <laughs> Snick up and. That's where uh, Tarantino got the inspiration. See, that's probably where they stole that flamethrower from was his house. It actually like he, looked the same. <laughs> they went to, what was it, Rick Dalton's house? <laughs> Rick Dalton. They just came up out of, underneath his bed. Maybe he had two, like a stunt double one yeah. or something. And they just stole the other one. <laughs> or no, this takes place. That movie took place in the 80s or uh, 60s. 60s. Yeah. So, yeah, this is just like later when he's an old man. He can't chase him with the fucking yeah. flamethrower. He probably just had it laying around for years, or he died of alcoholism, and there was a garage sale, and like whoever got it, they get they stole it from them. <laughs> but I just I want I want the prequel where the little monsters are are hounding and haunting like to death a, a, an old alcoholic Rick Dalton. Hell yes! You know Leo would sign up in a heartbeat for that. You know what I was just thinking too, like. Uh... They're they're doing these uh, sequels, you know, twenty years after they're made. What what would uh, Little Monsters two be like? It fucking yeah. big monsters. Yeah, I was, I was saying they kind of missed the boat. They should have done a sequel. Well, I guess there's no reason. There, at the time, there was no reason to do a yeah, sequel because yeah. it didn't make money. But yeah, now they would just make it just to make it for uh, something some called something plus because everything's called plus now yeah the thing is though howie mandel would never do that again he said because like now yeah. like yeah he just thinks of all the germs and shit and the latex and all that uh, all the germs. And I, <laughs> did, yeah. did he get a real bad illness like what made him so scared <laughs> i don't know yeah who knows but um yeah like what's funny was um like like I have no idea how they got him to come do the interview for the Blu-ray like how like the guy has hundreds of millions probably from all those game shows he hosts because like that's where you make like the real money hosting yeah. game shows now I've never heard him talk about this movie I was looking forward to seeing that yeah yeah but yeah they got him to come. it, it must have like literally just been like hey we'll reach out 99.9% he'll say no or we'll get no answer and he was probably just like yeah I want to talk about little monsters you know what I mean yeah it's probably like it's probably so easy because like all they need is like just like a little backdrop they could probably literally just show up at his house or something yeah 
I, I was thinking though, like uh, uh, if Howie Mandel didn't do it, they could do uh, Little Monsters too, and it's like fucking now Ben Savage is a grown adult. And like uh, he he's going down there and finding out like he's going back to Monsterland. He wants to reconnect with his buddy Maurice. And like they could do a twist ending where they find out like fucking he he stays down there too long and he becomes Maurice. So uh, Maurice was him in the future. Oh, okay. you know who the you know who, you know who should they they should get to direct that is mm. uh, Christopher Nolan. No, and he can shoot it on film, yeah. and he can break the pandemic yeah. to put it in theaters. <laughs> oh yeah, he can. That will be his second flop of the pandemic. That will force him. Th- yeah, you think Howie Mandel would show up since he has a reason to wear a mask? <laughs> the pandemic. <laughs> he might. He might. Exactly. Wouldn't it be weird if like Howie Mandel was like afraid of the common cold, but he wasn't afraid of COVID? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> So we, we should say, because it's the thing of, like, the more you go into little monster world, the, the more you slowly turn into a monster. But there's also, too, even if it's your first time going to monster world, if you get trapped overnight, you'll, you'll just turn into a monster instantly. So they got to yeah. run to all this, the stairs. Uh, yeah, because of the different time zones. Yeah. So they run to California where the sun isn't up yet. Yeah, you got to get to a place where, because if the sun comes up and you're down there, you're just stuck and you become a monster. Mm-hmm. So they they go to this uh this uh, homeless gentleman, which like like that would be probably pretty easy to do in California right now to find a homeless guy to pop out because yeah. they're all over the streets now. Mm-hmm. I thought this. What's your take on this, Zach? Like, there's like this really like heartfelt speech where like the savage is like, Oh, I don't know if I want to go. I know I want to get out of here. So I went on a monster, but I don't want to leave you Maurice and all. Oh, we're really friends forever. And all. it's like, can't he just come out of like the bed the next night and come visit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they pointed that out in the continuity, like, yeah. uh, on the INDB, like as a kid, this I always did like, oh man, this is really sad, and like it bummed yeah. me out, and like I never really thought about it, but like yeah, I guess Maurice could just come up yeah. and hang out with him. Yeah, as long <laughs> as he doesn't go down into the world anymore, he won't turn into a monster. But see, what if uh, it was also like Maurice can't stay on the normal world long enough? He'll turn back into his normal self. I mean, that I'll might just... be good. That could be the sequel. Yeah. It'll be Howie Mandel, and the, the sequel could just be Howie Mandel doing all these game shows. They don't even, it'd just be like a documentary type movie, really. Well, you, you know, yeah, exactly. You know how this has been like 30 years since this movie came out, Zach? If, you know, we're saying like they do these long, whatever, delayed sequels now. I, th- mm-hmm. I think what I would, if I was like a studio, I'd hire uh, Danny McBride and David Gordon Green. And uh, I'd have them come and make the 40 years later uh, sequel to Little Monsters. And I would just have them title it Little Monsters. Exactly. But it's not a remake. It's a sequel. They got to make it confusing, though. They're not yeah. going to, like, they're gonna, since there's no sequels to this, there's nothing to not follow. Yeah. So they're going to, like, not follow certain scenes in the movie. Yeah. Like, uh, the, the whole second time he goes, basically, they're going to take it up from, like, as if he only went there once and then right. never again. Yeah. Like this never happened, and like, yeah. like boy will still be down there. <laughs> exactly, they'll get Frank Whaley to come back. Mm-hmm. Because they need something to disregard. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a pretty, pretty dunk sequel. I bet nobody would go see it. Exactly. I did like the. I did wonder how they did the effect, if like of the little stars falling or whatever they are in the background while they're talking. Yeah, it looks like they just got somebody with a freaking uh, what's that called? Welders thing to be like yeah. shooting the sparks, <laughs> but they're falling so slow. Like like mm. maybe they like they shot it, you know, and then like they just did like a background like a green they had yeah. Howie Mandel and Ben Savage are just acting in fast motion so that it looks yeah, normal. They're like blah, 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 blah. doing their lines real quick. Yeah, and they're just some teamster shooting sparks down onto them. But yeah, like for for a movie that was like racing through everything, this goodbye scene, considering he had like thirty seconds left to get up out of the the monster world, it, like they did take their sweet ass time. Going, but we don't know where we've been. Amazing, born to be wild. It is amazing. I love the the biker jacket he's got now. 
See, the sequel could have him like sleeping with that jacket, wearing it, like, oh man, I miss yeah. Maurice. And then like one day he like he, he he breaks and he's just like, I'm gonna go full on, like I'm just gonna honor Maurice and he's he's jacking off onto it. Yeah. And like that was the, Isn't that what happened at Hellraiser? The guy cummed on the mattress. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how that's how he could bring him back into the real world. Yeah. It could be like a tie in with Hellraiser. I fucking tie in with, uh, you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Well, this is how I would, like, start it. You know what I mean? Like, the sequel. Like, he's in with the psychotherapist. He kind of started mm-hmm. out the way they did Fright Night 2, where, like, the therapist is, like, trying to, like, convince him it never happened at all. But he knows it really happened. But, like, the question is, is, like, I love that phone with the giant ass. Yeah, <laughs> I just noticed that. But it, it, yeah, he's always in with the psychotherapist and he knows it really happened, but he's like, did it happen like the way I remember? He's like, but it was so obviously, he's like, I don't remember getting molested, but it was so obviously a front for a child porn ring or pedophile <laughs> ring that like I had to have gotten molested. He's like, so he looks at the jacket and then he's like, the only way I'll know for sure if I got molested is if I come onto this vest. Mm-hmm. Oh, see how washed out it got there all of a sudden? Yeah. That's the, that's how they always had to do it whenever they do these end titles or the beginning opticals, titles. Yeah. Yeah. See, look, they're gonna show the scene where he's coming up for the bed to get the bully right here, and I always this is where I always thought he looked creepy. But it was in the movie, but here's it shows yeah. it there. Like Frank Whaley had like he was like fifth or sixth ba- like he was, he was in the credits above Ben Savage, who was like in the entire movie. That was weird. Amazing. You see, the bus driver was Magby. Oh, oh yeah, a one oh, yeah. one word actress. Maybe she was. Uh, she became like Cher or something. Yeah. I see. I always like movies that have the credits that say cast in order of performance or appearance. Right, right. I always thought, like, wouldn't that be funny if they said in order of importance? Like, <laughs> this guy's more important than this guy. But like, how would you do that without pissing off the cast? That'd be dumb. I think one of the voices was like Julie Kayser. I think that's one of the ladies. Or no, maybe I think it's somebody else. I thought it was somebody who did a voice for the Simpsons. Simpsons. I can barely that, talk anymore. The, the voice of the girl that says "nice ass." Yeah. Sounds really familiar. Yeah. I always thought, like, is that a cartoon voice? Maybe. I would think so, because like these voice actor people, like they work nonstop. Mm-hmm. Howie Mandel was the voice in a cartoon for a while. Bobby's World. He created it. Yeah, he did uh, fucking Gizmo in the Gremlins. That's right, he did Gizmo. Donk. And then, uh, isn't it weird that like Bill Hader was such a Howie Mandel fan? He tried to like you know steal his his gig and all that, and he like did all these voices like for um, the what do you call it, the Power Rangers robot? And then he did oh yeah, he did the beefs and boops for a BB eighty eight, and like just nobody cared. Like it didn't help his career at all. He tried to fucking steal the glove trick, too. Yeah. Fucking okay. asshole. I remember when I was a kid. Like, when I was a kid, it was, like, a weird time because, like, it was around that time where there was that big, like, comedy, stand-up comedy boom, you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. like, there was, like, a lot of uh, comics that were famous. Like, you see, you, you would see them do stand-up comedy on TV, and then, like, a lot of them would make appearances on TV shows. Then, some, then like, some of them would, would get... um cartoons like like uh howie mandel had bobby's world and louis anderson had little louis or whatever the hell it was called mm, yeah yeah so it was like yeah it was it was weird but i remember like howie mandel was like the kid's favorite comedian because he always put that rubber glove and blew it up on his head like you may imagine how many times he probably had to do that live like you mm-hmm. know when he would tour around and she probably got tired of rubber gloves but what's funny See, he probably just ran around with rubber gloves all the time because he's so germaphobic that's what he said in that interview. He said, yeah. like, he ha- he happened to, like, the first time he did stand-up, it was just, like, a spur-of-the-moment thing. And, like, he just happened to have a rubber glove in his pocket because he was kind of a germaphobe even back then. Yeah. So at some point, it must have just got even, like, worse for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it all collapsed. Yeah, they had a Talking head song in this movie. Yep. That was the, the one that was playing, baby. Yeah. North Carolina Film Office. Damn, what's his name? What's going in between North Carolina and South Carolina? Mm hmm. But yeah. See, it probably was North. If I said South Carolina, it's because I was fucking forgetting which one it was. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I remember that was a thing too in like the 80s. Um, 
like they were trying to like you know how they ended up making like Canada and later Georgia these film production places. North Carolina mm-hmm. tried to do that and like uh, especially Dino De Laurentiis had a studio there and all that shit. Like like that's where they did um Maximum Overdrive, which we talked about on EC and all that shit. It might have been the same one because I remember they said yeah. that like that was one of the reasons they uh, shot in North Carolina. Apparently they they did like tax breaks there. And like Dino De, De Laurentiis had a, a studio there, yeah. Yeah. Dog. So, what'd you think of that movie? Was that, was that the first time you saw it in years? Like, is it like meh to you as an adult, or? It, you know, it wasn't even like a thing of like, is it meh? It's kind of weird, but the the light wasn't on on my microphone this whole time because the cord was like kind of loose in the back of it. But you heard me the whole time, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hopefully it worked fine. But no, you, yeah. you you know what it really was was um it wasn't so much like this movie was meh. Like like it actually kind of exceeded my expectations in a lot of ways. It was like this movie is a lot stranger and weirder than I remember, which like you think it wouldn't surprise me with all the weird 80s shit I always watch. But mm-hmm. um yeah, it was just, I was like, there was so, like, and, and honestly, I didn't remember how good the special effects were. Like, I was kind of blown away how good all the effects are when, like, his eyes popped out and then, like, you know, mm-hmm. the dog hand and the shit come out of his head and boy ripped his face off. So, like, yeah, it's it's pretty good. It was never a movie I was super high on. Like, I think as a kid, I think I kind of, like, watched it and was kind of just okay on it. But I think, mm-hmm. I think now I think I probably like it better just because, like, Man, these practical effects and the amount of them that were there, like, it's definitely, uh, you know, I'm definitely glad I bought it, you know. I'll probably be watching it a couple more times over the years for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I still like it, yeah. I, st- I still give it, like, a seven, baby. And like, yeah. yeah, like, the only downfall to me is just, like, you know, because it, it seems like there's a... Uh, you know, just like uh, the the three act thing, like uh, yeah. the the kind of uh, the whole formula of it, where it seems yeah. like, oh, this part, like we needed more of them just fucking around and stuff like that. But like, oh no, we got to start setting up the third act and stuff like that. Just seems like it uh, it, it blows through a little quicker than I would have yeah. liked it to. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird because they the the movie sets up a certain uh, pace in the beginning, which I wouldn't even say is slow. It's just you know, like, yeah, a, they take their time to get yeah. to the monster, and then, yeah, and then, yeah, it's like they take their time at first, and then all of a sudden, it's just like, boom, <laughs> it's like the mm-hmm. movie flies by. Yeah, no, I liked it a lot. I just, you know, like I said, I mean, not that it mattered because it's not like he was a star at the time or anything, but, but the only thing that would, that would maybe not knock this up a little bit more for me is if there was more Frank Whaley, because, like, not just because of Frank Whaley, but, like, I actually thought he was generally creepy the way you said. Like, he was just wearing somebody's face and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, like I think I would have liked it. In all honesty, like, I didn't really care one way or another about the Snick character because he kind of just looked like a big roided up version of Maurice, which we've already seen in the movie. As a kid, I was scared of him, too. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. So, like, yeah, if Boy was just kind of in it more, like, mm-hmm. I think, I think you know, the, the Monster World story kind of would have been cooler but no like it's 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 a good movie and i think more than anything it's uh it's a movie kids that are kids now should see to remember like what a movie could be like before all this cgi bullshit you know what i mean Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to like uh, like when my niece and nephew get a certain age. Like there's yeah. like movies I want. Like this is one like the Bill and Ted movies. I'm looking forward to like just kind of reliving it through them again. And like like uh, I guess uh, they're both like I guess uh, Hocus Pocus was like streaming on something, and yeah. they're like really liking that movie now. And that was the one I watched growing up. It's pretty dog. I remember. Uh... I like I I got my wisdom teeth whatever stitched up pulled and pulled out and they had to stitch my gums up. And I couldn't use a straw for a long time and I think the first movie I went to where I could use a straw again enough weeks have passed was Hocus Pocus. And Dog. Like, I had the the biggest crush on Sarah Jessica Parker in that movie. Like I don't know why. Like I thought she looked so hot. Like I was whatever I was fifteen sixteen years old. I thought she looked so hot as the the pale mm-hmm. witch lady. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, like, there was, a, like, for a long time, people were like, oh, she's a babe, and then just yeah. that, like, out of nowhere, it was like, 
fucker. It's like yeah. just completely reversed. I don't get it. Like, I kind of know what they mean in terms of, like, her looks changed. Like, she got real skinny and stuff. But, like, if you look at I think the movie was, like, L.A. Story or something with Steve Martin. Like, they play her up. Like, she's the hottest, youngest chick in the world and that. And, like, especially if you see her, like, in her teenage roles. Like, she was always pretty, always cute. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't get where, the, where that horse face shit, like, came from, from Sex and the City. It's like... I think it was just really that show did, didn't portray any of the the women in a flattering light. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So everybody was like, "Oh, fuck these bitches." Oh. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Little Monsters. I think is good. I think it's good too that we re- released this around the time we did. I mean, the the Blu-ray came out in September, and that obviously is kind of what pushed us into uh, doing it. But at the same time, I, th- I think uh, Christmas time, even though this movie has nothing to do with Christmas per se. I think this is like a good movie to sit around over Christmas holiday and watch with your kids and stuff like that. So, hell yeah! I was kind of surprised the Blu-ray came with a digital code too. And all that. <laughs> yeah, so did Shivers, didn't it? Yeah, it did. I don't think any of the other ones did. The best maybe, maybe, ones, yeah. Yeah, maybe they're gonna try to add those now. Yeah. Yeah, but it, I, I couldn't imagine watching this on digital. It'd be weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like the oldest, shittiest, cheapest movie. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Zach, uh, do you got any um, uh, tricks up your sleeve for your other podcasting adventures going on right now? Um, uh, me and Mac are thinking about doing uh, – because, like, uh, every time we're thinking – like, we always talk about how much we love Polly Shore. Oh, yeah. And Polly Shore movies. And we're like, every year, like, we forget to do Son-in-Law around uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. So this this year, it's like we thought about it in advance. So we're thinking, should we do it? But we only – like, we already have, like, two episodes planned. So we're going to see if we can pull it off, maybe get a, another episode, of, like, put out for the special month. Babel. Yeah, I think if you guys did that, it, it, it'd be sick. Like, especially you guys need it. If anybody needs to talk about Polly Shore, it's you guys. Well, it, we won't even talk about the movie. We'll just talk about, like, wanting to bathe in Polly Shore's cummies the whole time. Yeah. Which, that's really what you really want to do. Exactly. If uh, if he ever does, like, stand-up comedy, like, around where you guys live, like, both you guys got to go see him. Because, like, he's, like, one of those guys after the show, like, he sells you T-shirts and takes pictures with everybody, you know what I mean? Exactly. It'd be You guys definitely got to get your picture taken with Polly Shore. Mm-hmm. Especially, like, if COVID's still there. Like, imagine getting COVID from Polly Shore. Oh, that would be the best. Exactly. I, I know you can go get that um, uh, COVID right now from Nick DiPaolo, so... Dog. Yeah, he he's doing his stand up, and he's a he's a big supporter of uh you know pretending the virus is fake. And uh, like I watch his show on YouTube, and he's like, yeah, he's like last four weeks, I think. He's like, yeah, like I went to this town, I did comedy with this, and he keeps talking about like I'm sick though, I got this low grade fever, I got the chills. <laughs> <laughs> but but then, then he's like, come out and see me this weekend in Milwaukee. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Want to take me out to dinner? It don't matter because I can't taste anything either. <laughs> yeah, Weird. really. Amazing. Amazing. So, yeah, so we just want to say, everybody, thank you for uh, listening. Uh, we, we hope you guys are Little Monsters fans out there that we, like we are. Um, it definitely, man, like, uh, talk about a movie that was, uh, it was like a big deal when we were kids, but it, I guess just to kids, because it wasn't a big deal to the rest of the world, because nobody mm-hmm. saw it, you know what I mean? On that uh, special thing, on the that promotional thing on the Blu-ray, where it's like trying to sell copies to the uh, to the uh, video store rental places, they mentioned that like you can get it for the nice price of eighty-seven bucks a oh, copy that's a deal. or something like that. Yeah. What did we pay for the Blu-rays? Like twelve, thirteen, something like that. Yeah, I think ten bucks. Yeah, ten eighty-one <laughs> Amazon market. Yeah, can you, you imagine? <laughs> Imagine, adju- like, not, not adjusted for inflation, but whatever you call it, where you go back and readjust for inflation, that, w- mm-hmm. that would be that, like, 80 bucks in 1989 dollars. That would be, like, could you imagine paying 300 bucks for a copy of a movie right now? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to believe that's how much the VHSs were when they came out, yeah. But that tells you how, in, in the, I, I don't, I, I wish I remembered, but it's, long time ago I listened to it but I love the episode you and uh, Mac did where you guys just talked about the old video stories you went to and you just reminisced about 
like all the mm-hmm. weird video stores. Like there was one you went to that was just like in a trailer or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like think about the old days. Like I, that's definitely the business I would have went into if I was, you know, mm-hmm. you know, in my twenties or thirties or whatever in the eighties. I would, because think about like these places. Like you just had to get a little retail space, get about four or five hundred tapes, and like the business was booming enough that you could pay ninety bucks for a tape, and it would rent out like two hundred times, and you would make a shitload of money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Brilliant. So yeah, so everybody hang in there. We know the you know, this year's been tough, but thankfully it's coming to an end. Unthankfully twenty twenty one is gonna be exactly the same. <laughs> but we can exactly. Zach, can't we pretend like it's gonna be different? Pretend it's gonna be different, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We can pretend like we can pretend like we're all gonna be uh seeing Fast and the Furious thirteen in the theaters next summer. We can mm-hmm. all we can all pretend and ten it part two and everything. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, it's been a wacky and weird ride, but uh, yeah, I'm, it, it's been fun. Zach, I want to thank you. Thank you, baby. I, I, I jump at the chance to come on this show. This show is the darkest. It is because we because we get to talk about all the classics, like Little Monsters, which people hold finally in their hearts from their childhood. And we get mm-hmm. to talk about how molestery it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, right, everybody, thanks for listening. And we'll catch you next time back here in the movie graveyard.